All right, guys. So, like, can you can you see my screen? Please confirm me if it's loud and clear. This is your mentor, Dr. Sherry. We're going to start the session in a minute. Uh, please mention if if the screen is visible to all of you, actually. And it is really kind that you know all of you joined the session and uh, let's have fun today, actually, during the session. Uh, my name is Dr. Sherry. I've been a you know MC instructor for last seven years. It's been quite a while, actually. Right. And under my guidance, I can say proudly that over uh, 970 doctors passed, actually. So we are ready to hit 1,000, I think. So I hope you guys are with me to reach that number, I think. So who are with me? Please mention in the comment section who wants to pass the MC in a single go. I mean, it is always said that, you know, the one said more loudly, I mean, <laughs> pass the exam. All right, that's great, actually. You see, some people are right, like me, yes, yeah. So it's, it shows like a lot of like, you know, craziness there. Great, so let's go, let's not wait too much. I don't want to keep you guys wait too much, so hi. All right, so we have a recall class coming up today, right? I mean, we have done one thing, um, respiratory theory, and Today, like there's two things we're going to do. One, um, I'm going to demonstrate to you on that, you know, uh, recall actually, you know, how to solve these things and a lot of guidance would be given at the same time. All right. So that's the main thing. Uh, secondly, try using a laptop device. Try to attend the classes sitting on a table chair, not on the bed. Sometimes I can turn on your mobile, you know, videos. So be careful on that one. Yeah, so nothing, do not do anything unusual at home <laughs> so that you, you get into a little embarrassing situation. Yes. So this great guys so has to be, has to be like, we believe you that, you know, during class time, you're doing class, not anything else. All right. So that's, that's the point actually coming to the live classes actually, and try attending all the live classes in a month. Maybe you can miss one class actually, you know, that can happen because of your tight roster but if you already know that you know you can't um yeah do that yes like definitely thank you so much for reminding like you know we will start with demonstrating our notes a little bit today it, it's a good day to start actually i have sent um the notes to i think all of our doctors if anyone is remaining after class report me like i will resend the notes again actually okay in that case but uh in my concern, I think I have finished sending the notes. Please check your email or Google Drive or all this thing, actually. Okay, so if anyone is left, please contact after the class, actually. Okay, if anyone is left, actually. 99% doctor has already received the notes. Those have finished admission, actually. Great. All right. Right. Nice. That's nice, actually. Good to have all of you, actually. So, I mean, now is not the time. Not in Zoom. After the class, I'll tell you what to do. Thank you so much, guys. Yes. All right, guys. Now let's go and little demonstrate on things. Um, that is our notes section, actually. Okay, so how notes looks like. I'm just going to demonstrate you now, actually. Great, guys. You guys are doing great. Now here is the thing. This is how the notes section I'm going to demonstrate you looks like. Uh, whenever you open the folder, it will look like that, guys. There, there is no point, you know. If you mention I didn't get it because I'm not, I'm not following the Zoom chat box right now, actually. Okay, so after class, you know, we will um, take your inquiries. Actually, great. Now, whenever you open the notes section, it mostly looks like that. Actually, please confirm in the comment section how many of you have received the notes. Actually, I mean, those of of course finished admission and received notes. Please comment in the comment section very quickly. Received, mentioned as received. That, you know, so that, you know, we get idea that, you know, yes. So I think, you know, most people have received that is excellent, actually. Right. Now, that's the thing. Um, let's go and start. Like, this is how it looks like. Now, Google Drive has a lot of options. Like, you see, when you open with a laptop device, it shows, like, you know, shared with me. You see, shared with me. So when you click that one, you know, this folder will be shown, actually. This folder will be shown to you that, you know, what is that folder? You know, uh, my MC notes by Dr. Sharia, that will be shown, you know, in that case, right? So that'll be great, actually. Yeah. Uh, guys, please make sure, you know, next classes, you do not use a mobile device to come to the classes. You might be cut off from the class some cases. Okay. Um, so try coming to the classes with a table, chair, laptop, 
in proper way, actually. I know you, you have duties, some of you, uh, but try manage that duty, okay? From Especially from the next classes, actually. I mean, not for good, you know, class contents, class quality, but at the same time, I've been a little strict about especially coming to the classes and doing the classes properly, actually. So you have to follow this certain particular things. Now, if you come to the notes, this is how it has been organized. It is given alphabetically. Now, many of your Google Drive, like if you open your Google Drive, guys, I'm giving you one minute. If you if you want to open your Google Drive, I'm just giving you a minute, actually. You know, open your Google Drive along with me. Open and go to the notes section, actually. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, take your time. I'm just going to demonstrate you a few things, actually, here. No problem. Yeah. Those received, please mention in the link. Uh, those didn't receive like probably you join delayed or like this thing that thing so it's a process actually so those joined in july a few of them might be remaining actually you know so we'll be finishing that one after the class today no problem so have patience like not a problem just watch what i'm giving the demonstration actually yeah now here is here we go like this is how it looks like actually okay this is how the drive looks like yeah. So what you have to do, like, you know, when your organization may not look the same with a laptop, because some of you are using a different view, like a, this view, right? So how how many of your um, Google Drive looks like this kind of view? Actually, guys, you know, uh, kindly, you know, if you guys stop commenting, some of you not received, we didn't ask for it, that one, okay? Like, you know, because I cannot send it now, actually, because I'm in a live class now, actually. All right. So um, let's, let's just focus on that one, guys. Uh, so in this case, actually, so there's certain types of view out there, actually, view out there. So which view you are having? The, this view, this view uh, is a called grid view, and this view is called a list view, actually. Please check your Google Drive, whichever, you know, you have, actually. So many, I think, accidentally, they put this grid view. I think ideal is, is a list view. What do you think which view is better? Grid view or list view? Which view is better? So we, we think the list view looks more better, right? List view looks more better. So do one thing, starting with that one, that change your view of your Google Drive. Now, if you're using a mobile device, I can't tell what's coming in your mobile, actually. I'm talking about a laptop demonstration, and we believe you, you know, you use a laptop device as well. List view is better. I think everyone is mentioning that one, right? Correct, everyone. List view is better. Excellent, guys. Next coming, you know, is it organized alphabetically? Okay, is this thing is organized alphabetically or not? That's an another thing actually, okay? Now, some of you, I mean, it, it's organized like in a little different way from the Z. And some of you is organized, you know, it's little like alphabetically actually. My one is, you know, organized alphabetically actually. You can organize your own Google Drive. Now, if it's coming from the Z, Z, that means it's your Google Drive is in reverse position. So you need to correct that one and bring that one to the regular position. Guys, I'll upload the recording so you can see that one and you can do demonstration of your own after you receive the note. So don't worry on that one. So is everyone's uh, in alphabetically or, you know, opposite actually? So uh, so this is like ascending and descending this side actually this point. Okay. So which position do you have in your Google Drive? Have you checked? Like, is it alphabetically or is it like a, the opposite, actually? Please mention in the comment section. This is a demonstration on the notes so, so that, you know, you guys can. Yes. As yours. Okay. Very good answer, actually. As same as yours. Okay. That's also a good answer. Same as. Hmm. Well done. If it's not, if it's not, then please, you know, <laughs> you know, just change it by clicking this icon. Just near the name, there is a arrow button. You just you can just change that one. Okay. Most important is to change the you know grid view to list view actually, which many of your Google Drive is in grid view. Now, how many of you has changed today the view? So, how many of you has changed today your view? Please mention in the comment section. So how many of you has changed your, uh, you know, view? Okay, well done if you have changed your view. No, that's okay. I mean, it's it's a newly knowing things, right? Is it feeling better now, doctor? Is it feeling better after changing? Definitely, it's a yes. Okay, that is good. Guys, try coming with a laptop device and try study with a laptop device. It's more better, actually. Okay, great. 
yeah it, it, i mean a lot of things i will tell you for your life that will be uh, really good actually in coming days actually like you know google drive iCloud, this, that things you will be uh, needed, you know, throughout your life, actually. So a lot of techniques and things I will tell you time to time, which can be, you know, very useful for you, actually. Like I could have just give the notes, but I, not necessarily that giving an, you know, IT knowledge that, you know, which view might, you know. So these are the important things. Now coming to that part, there's the in general compile notes is also there. And then you can see. Uh, because it's going alphabetically, the few things came up like a biostat ethics. So we don't need that one in the beginning. Skipping the gynae, uh, we don't need that one for now. Now getting into the medicine. Now our target is what? Our target is medicine in the beginning, correct? Now in the uh, medicine, if you go, uh, where we have to go? We basically have to go to which one? We have to go to the respiratory, right? So we have to go to, yes, my dear, you know, you have to go to respiratory so from here it started can you see that one did you find your one please comment in the comment section did you find your respiratory one okay or you have already find it actually i mean please comment in the comment section so this is the respiratory so you know from here so respiratory pneumonia copd lung cancer pan coast you know you can see this that this that okay then pneumothorax sarcoidosis yeah so th this is the certain certain things out there these are the certain things out there i hope you have seen that one and you have enjoyed that one actually uh don't worry those of you not received will receive today doesn't matter respiratory is still going on some of your admission was late so maybe some of you don't receive it actually so excellent fouled already excellent you guys those of you already find it okay hope you enjoyed guys some of the notes were interesting like example maybe say this is pneumothorax say for example so this is like the pneumothorax say for example uh we'll have like pneumothorax today so don't worry i will guide you more on pneumothorax now in the pneumothorax if you see that you know what to study like you know air in the plural cavity pneumothorax actually is a uh, common topic it's also tested in uh, surgery emergency and also again part of the medicine but mostly it's a we can say it's a part of the emergency thing but technically also in the respiratory so it's air in the lung field. It can be open, it can be closed, it can be tension. The most dangerous one is a tension pneumothorax, right? All of you know that actually. And if it is a tension pneumothorax, you just need to insert a needle in the second intercostal space. Like it's like this, like, you know, release all the air, release all the air actually. And you can see one thing that, you know, you know, there is a percentage wise, like, you know, something in John Murtag is also present. You need to remember this thing because this one we will use today for recall class actually okay so cutoff value 25 percent this is the percentage of lung collapse what is this 25 percentage this is the percentage of lung collapse actually okay so if lung collapse you know um, percentage is less than 25 just observe i mean if if no symptom <clears throat> i'm sorry if no symptom present if less than 25 percent collapse and symptom present my quick question, what do you mean by symptom present? Now, this is, I'll come back to you guys. What do you mean by symptom present? Now, symptom present means if like a suddenly <clears throat> shortness of breath, <clears throat> can't breathe properly, right? So shortness of breath, this near that symptom is present. Okay. And also talking about the vital may not be that stable. Okay. And, you know, sudden, you know, very tightness on the chest. So this all together this is a persistent symptom is present okay so this if present so even if it is less than 25 percent doesn't matter what we will do we'll think this is pneumothorax and we'll do chest strain agreed with me guys so if symptoms are present of pneumothorax we would like to go for a chest strain we don't want to take any risk agreed it's an emergency we don't want to take any risk Next coming, symptom is not much present, but I can see in the x-ray, maybe different people tolerance level is different. So if it is 25 or more than 25, then it is again a chest strain. Now MC, you know, last day I mentioned, I think all of you remember, they have, you know, a lot, lot of hookworm, you know, in there some parts actually, you know. <laughs> so uh, thing is, you know, they would like to, you know, find a question, you know, what might not suit the John Muttak. So uh, exactly, they will give you 25. Okay, so you see below 25, above 25, and now they give exactly 25. Now you confuse which way to go. 
Okay, so we have seen from the experience, if exactly 25% given, which is a cutoff value, you will still go for chest strain. Remember that? So you still go for chest strain. So this is a tip from my side. You know, if they, we also have antidote for them, right? If they're hook arm, we also have antidote for them. Okay, so if they, they will give you 25%, we'll see that question probably today. So that's the drain. Okay. Uh, yes, good one. Fifteen percent in some books. That's an old book, actually. It's a handbook. You know, MC handbook has some guidelines needed to be corrected because it is thirteen year old. You can say it's a fossil nowadays, but it's still some contents are quite good. Yes. So follow the one I said in the classes. Follow the one in the recent John Murtha, my dear. Okay. That's the thing. Next is the interesting thing. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. You see, seven very important thing you need to know from the pneumothorax. Sorry, I think pneumothorax, I didn't highlight it that much. You know, we were tired last day. Yeah, so let's start that one and then go to the recall, actually. Okay, now you see this one, pneumothorax. A lot of air in the lung, I mean, plural cavities, of course. What is the finding? I mean, other than this breathlessness, shortness of breath, chest tightness, you know, vital deteriorating. As a clinician, when you put the stethoscope, what finding you are getting? So the very first thing, you know, patient came, patient showing symptoms, can't breathe probably, shortness of breath. We put the steto, we've tried to find, is there any reduced air entry in a one side? Reduced air entry in one particular side. And that is a, probably an indication of pneumothorax. That is probably an indication of pneumothorax. Actually, now what is the next thing I will do? I'll just go and, you know, start trying to percuss. Right, so it will be hyper resonant in that case, right? It will be hyper resonant. So that will be a sign that this is a pneumothorax actually. Also, by this time, it is, if it is applicable, you quickly do a radiology, you will find a radiology showing that, you know, uh, lung collapse. Another thing, you know, the mediastinal shifting positioning. Guys, did you, res you know, learn this thing in med school that, of course, so you all do, there's a mediastinal shifting. Massive pneumothorax, if it is there, there will be mediastinal shifting. Means trachea shifted, apex big shifted. Shifted to which side? Opposite side, actually. So that shifting can be also there. Okay, some cases, not all cases, mind it, actually. All right, so medicinal shifting can be there in the radiological part, actually, like, X, you know, trachea shifted, apex width shifted. All right, so that's the another thing. So that's a sign mostly of the tension pneumothorax, actually. Now, reduce energy in the on one side. Now, there's another question. They try to give you a twist. As you mentioned, that agency examiner, they try to come up with always twist, actually. Now, reduced air entry in the one side and the percussion note is dull. Is this a pneumothorax? Certainly not. Pneumothorax does not have, I mean, has dull finding. Like, you know, example, if it is like that, it's like not expected. This is a hyper reason. And this is a, you know, dull finding. And this is like a hemothorax. Okay, so the, please be careful in the exam. Pneumothorax and hemothorax, they'll try to mix up all the time. Just this one line that, you know, percussion note resonant, percussion note dull. I hope you're following me. Okay, so this is the thing. Yes, any fluid dull, good point. Now, here is the point, tension pneumothorax management. Guys, please quickly mention in the comment section, what is the management for tension pneumothorax? I'm sure all of you would be agreed that insertion of the needle in the second intercostal, I mean, in that affected side, and needle thoracostomy. I repeat, needle thoracostomy. So they use the short term, needle thoracostomy. Clear, everyone? Okay, now coming to the regular pneumothorax, like a closed pneumothorax or open pneumothorax. Which one is most dangerous? Tension is most, most dangerous. Other than this, closed or open pneumothorax. If I want to ask you one cause of pneumothorax, number one cause for pneumothorax, what it would be? Spontaneous traumatic idiopathic. Spontaneous traumatic idiopathic. This is the exam question line. Spontaneous traumatic idiopathic. Answer, spontaneous pneumothorax, according to Davidson Medicine. Spontaneous, my dear. All right. So regular pneumothorax, open, close. This can be because of a spontaneous, traumatic, and blah, blah, and the other things. So what you will do is a chest strain. Clear, everyone? What you will do here is a chest strain here. Okay, great. Then, you know, you must you can be given a radiology. Some cases you see the radiology. You can be given CT scan as well. So you have to see that one and then, you know, proceed with that one, actually. Great. Now, tricky part in the exam, tricky part what? Like they will give you a scenario of new pneumothorax, but what they're demanding is a different thing, not a investigation, not a um, diagnosis, not a management. Rather, they're asking a suggestion. So what is the suggestion for 
like you know the people suggestion is here avoid air travel for three months any other suggestion can you give my dear i mean they they always like to switch options avoid air travel anything which creates pressure on the lung actually right so any suggestions like this you want to add you have like you know um okay smoking you can say anything another one where like you know extreme pressure smoking will not sudden create extreme pressure yeah i mean in generally smoking should be quitting but another term driving yes like is scuba diving or diving underwater all right so sudden like you know pressure need to avoid so one is go up and one is a go down actually how many of you have done you know this skydiving or you know uh, like or underwater diving so far actually mention that one in comment section like you know which one you did or both <laughs> okay yeah let's do all together someday okay <laughs> yes okay. Why not to do before AMC, you know? <laughs> By the time you fin finish AMC, you never know. <laughs> okay. You know, paraglide, out of all of them, paragliding is more dangerous. You know, just, just to be noted. Keep that one in mind. You know, out of all of them, you know, the more, like if you concern the safety thing, the paragliding is the less safest, actually. Like hot air balloon, then skydiving, then underwater driving, you know, it's like, you know, paragliding is just one, one person is quite a risky sometimes. So try avoid that one. Okay. Coming back to this one, like special suggestion, avoid air travel. Also, we get to know from all of you together, like diving should be avoided as bungee jumping, then, you know, this, that actually, and he's not in position of bungee jumping already. Now, last but not the least, already percentage we mentioned less than 25% of, sir, 25 or more than 25% chest train. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this note part. I mean, we try to be like to the point notes actually. Hey, one, I can make a 25 slide note and one is a note like this. Which one do you prefer? A 25 slide note or like a, like what is clinical feature? What is, uh, you know, <laughs> sign? Like, uh, I think this is more effective. What do you think? You know, because, you know, eventually you know it. You open a book, you know it. That, you know, what are clinical feature? What is management? So, no, no. Highlighting in this way, on point, is more useful, actually. You know, you, you, you know that, okay, this type of thing, actually, short one. People like, you know, bullet capsule. And my, by the way, dear doctors, you know, I'm also already, you know, making a very special tablet for all of you, actually. I'm not sure, you know, that tablet is here or not. Yes. So, you know, I'm... <laughs> So one capsule, you will pass MC1. 3.5 hour exam, you will finish in five minutes. So who wants this capsule? Please let me know in the comment section. Anyways, <laughs> I'm getting it from the mountain of Himalayas very soon, actually, you know, so don't worry. So just one capsule and you all will, you know, finish 3.5 hours exam in just five minutes, actually. All right fun apart so let's go and start today's you know the recall session actually great great guys you guys are great doing great okay i'm just taking my screen just for a second yeah i'm just bringing that uh, my uh, respiratory file actually All right, I'm going to share. Please confirm me if you can see my screen again, loud and clear. Please comment in the comment section. Are we ready, guys? Let's go and start, actually, okay? The new motor is a little left, so like just, you know, mention that one now. Great. All right, excited about... See, guys, if you enjoyed the first class, I know there are some doubts and things remaining, always. There is an inquiry zone we have in the respiratory. Feel free to ask after the class if anything came up regarding to this class actually you can ask anything actually I, I, I usually answer back in 24 hours actually inboxing sometimes is difficult for me to manage because my team also works on that so they don't understand the medical question they skip that one actually so just for you guys there is an inquiry zone in the respiratory so you can go and ask questions there actually so and you can write it now for now you can write it if anything in your mind and later you know you can definitely ask in our inquiry zone okay
we can go and start like immediately now. All right. I hope so. We have done with this one, restrictive and obstructive. Yes, that's a yes. Now, this is the first question that is in your screen. Yes. Now, now is the time to apply all those asthma knowledge as you learned. Actually, let's see you know, how we can apply more better. Eight-year-old child came with asthma attack every month for last 12 months. It aches, inhalated salbutamol. What to use for prevention? You have four options. Tricky, smart question. Come on, guys. He's eight years. He's more than five years. Right? So let's come out here. Like, you know, what you guys are thinking. Let's see. Well done, guys. Well done. You know, in our country, there's a very nice thing available. It's, it's called bamboo. You know, it's very... <laughs> All right. So, coming to that one. <laughs> now, what just happened here, actually? What just has happened? The very first question, I think, it's okay, guys. You know, this is AMC. So, this is the thing you need to... So, remember this thing. The very, very first class, you just got a bamboo, actually. Bamboo means like, you know, you got fooled with a question, actually. And now... He is actually, you know, see, normally we give, we don't avoid the salbutamol and just fruticasone. Actually, since you have that option, inhalated salbutamol and the fruticasone. If, if you remember the step up in the management where there was salbutamol plus fruticasone. Did you remember this, guys? He, he will definitely require the salbutamol. It is not like you turn off salbutamol and you, you are giving fruticasone. Am I correct? So you will be giving these things in combination. So suddenly, because of excitement, oh, this is the prophylactic asthma question, right? So that's not the question here. So this is like the combination actually, okay? So how many of you just got a bamboo actually in the very first question? It's okay, remember this actually, this is MC exam and they keep doing it actually. So this is nice one actually. So asthma, you can see from John Murta Kate tradition. Also, you can see asthma from our SMA node. I hope so. That's a useful for all of you, actually. Okay. Great. Coming to the next one. All right. Three-year-old child came with asthma attack every month for last 12 months. So took, I think. So this one is, I think, um, yeah. So I think almost similar sort of question, almost similar sort of question. You can see like, you know, attack for 12 months. So this is like, you know, yeah. So this is A, this is B, this is C. So see, see this is a combination. Combination. It's still a lot of people made mistake. <laughs> Don't get frustrated, guys. You know, you'll be fine with time. You'll be fine with time. So that's okay. All right. So that's the thing. So page number eight. 868 John Murtak, that is the reference. You should go and see that one. You should go and, you know, see that one. All right. Uh, good question. Someone asked a good question. He is just three years. Okay. Coming back to that one. This kid, this kid needs profile access. Okay. So we are expecting an option SCG here. SCG here. If SCG is here, our answer is definitely SCG. If SCG is here, definitely answer is SCG. Many times in the exam question, they will not give you SCG. If SCG is not in option, then we can choose the fluticasone. Clear, guys? Okay. It's not like, you know, you can't really always use. It's recommended not to use below five years. But when you when not in option like SCG, then you know the fluticasone, okay? So this is the tip of the day today. If SCG is not in option, you can still use the fluticasone, okay? Thank you, my dear. That uh, this one was a difficult question, a little bit. Yes, I can understand. Okay. So, age is a concern which is less than five years, same like you, but we usually proceed with SCG. SCG also has inhalation from. Since SCG is not an option, then you know that's how you know we got into that one. All right. 
Great, guys. If you have any further question, you take note down and uh, there's an inquiry zone. You can ask us later. Okay, don't worry. Let's move forward to the next question. Best preventer in a four-year boy, asthma is relieved by salpetamol. So this is again asking about preventer. A lot of question is coming about a preventer and a four-year boy. Now, what do you think? The best answer. This one, I think no one will make any mistake. So here, I think the very clear answer, like, sorry about that one. Yeah. So here, I think the very clear answer would be asthma, not really by this one. I think it's it's going with the SCG. Its answer would be going with the SCG. Because this is very clear cut, actually. This is very clear cut. Okay. Asking about a preventer, asking about like, you know, asthma by salpintamol, what to do next, actually. But, yeah, so here's a little, little correction, asthma not relieved by salbutamol, little correction. Okay. Yeah, good question. If SCG is not present, you can pick up this one. Good question is this. If SCG is not present somehow, because they keep switching that one. Or imagine, you know, in a in a pharmacy, like maybe SCG is not available. SCG is not always available everywhere. So in that case, Floticas. Okay, someone asked, why not Montelukas? Montelukas is like, will not give you relief in that way, you know? So Montelukas in our country use more, but if you see those guidelines and the thing, it's just like, you know, been added. It's been added, actually. You can give that one along with these particular things, you know, it's not really that best quality of the drug, actually. Got it? Okay, here is a thing, a, a direct question. A five-year symptom of asthma severe admitted to the hospital. With a severe asthma admitted to the husband, nebulized and this that given to oral steroid. Now, during discharge, what to give actually? Fluticasone, oral steroid, lab actually. So in this one, the one drug, so is one a discharge a bit more early. So one drug has to be present to complete that treatment is the oral steroid. This is must has to present actually. Again, life-saving treatment or less steroid is necessary. If the patient admitted and want to release or discharge a bit more early, you know, make sure that oral steroid is there actually. This is an exam question and it's a popular one actually. It's a popular one. All right. Yeah, asthma, another thing, if it's a child's asthma, guys, you can read it from the RCH guideline. Please remember this one. Time to time, I'll tell you more about the references website. So one other website is the RCH guideline, guys. Example, how to search it. How to search it. Example, uh, you type asthma, then you type RCH guideline. You type asthma, then you type RCH guideline. That will be better, actually. Okay, duration of steroid. Okay, like duration of the steroid, you know, like normally, you know, we give a short course of steroid, right? We usually give a short course of steroid. Also tell the patient it is not harmful. Some doctor has this thing in feeling that if you give a steroid course, it's very, very harmful. So you give a short five days course, some cases extended up to seven days. So let's take the basic and, you know, so five days of short steroid with a tapering form, we just like to give it. Okay, patient will be fine in a while. All right. Okay, this question I think we, I think did, I think it just came up a little later actually. Okay. So I think that, oh, okay. So three year boy with a recurrent as attack of asthma asking about the best preventer by inhalation. See, there's a line that is extra added. And last day I have mentioned in the theory class that best preventer by inhalation, best preventer by inhalation yeah. So some many doctors said, no, I think this is not the answer. Ruticason is the answer because it has the inhalation form. Now, our quick question is sodium chromoglycate. Did I show you last day? The sodium chromoglycate also has inhalation, inhalational form. Last day we show in, in a chart, right? We highlighted that one. So that is the importance of that theory. So our answer is here. That is sodium chromoglycate. All right, so base preventer, base preventer by inhalation. So sodium, this chromoglycate. So asthma prophylaxis as a summary or a nutshell, asthma prophylaxis in a children less than five years, sodium chromoglycate more than five years, more than five years, that is fluticasone. 
Great. Clear now? Well done, guys. Actually, reference we have seen already from the John Murtha. About the asthma, asthma.org.mu. Asthma also has a handbook separately. If you want to know about very extended asthma, that they, you know the you can use asthma handbook Australia. That's the thing. All right. Anyways, so many options. Yes. Don't get confused. You know, if you if you are in confusion, it's better you follow what I said, actually. Okay, that's better, right? Okay. Five-year-old boy presented to the ER means emergency room due to asthma attack. When someone is presenting in the ER due to asthma attack, not a good news. Okay. Now we started something immediately. You had six puff, here's six puff salvitum not improved. So what to do next in this case? I think it's more about a practical answer for this one. So here that answer is a salbutamol in 20 minute interval again. We believe patient would be fine by this time. We believe patient would be fine by this time. Okay, this question didn't ask about 6 pub or 12 pub, but we, we would hope to see a question very soon regarding that. This question is asking about a basic in the clinical practice. I believe you know one of the level A evidence Spacer equals to nebulizer. In the emergency room in Australia, like, you know, it will not be treated as very much VIP. Or often, you know, you keep weighted a lot of time, actually, unless your vital is not deteriorating in that way. So it is high possibility that even in the emergency room, like things, you will be given a spacer device with this one. And nurses coming to guide you and, you know, giving a spicer device and, you know, showing you, okay, keep taking in that way, like, you know, some puffs like this, and then in a few minutes interval and repeat it actually, right? So that is the thing. Spacer is very useful, level A evidence, spacer equals to nebulizer nowadays. So even in the emergency room, it is hugely in demand now and hugely in use, especially uh, a doctor cannot sometimes manage all the patient actually. So sometimes, with the spacer, if you can manage something, you know, you can just keep them wet in the outdoor and, you know, just give them a spacer. Okay, you, you take it to nurse camps and demonstrate that one. And then see, you know, how it goes. If necessary, that later that, you know, according to John Murta, CORB or CARP, you know, 65, if it is covering in any way, then you can take the patient. I mean, then you can hospitalize or then you can take the patient to the ICU according to that one. Okay, clear everyone. When is the time for hospitalization? That's the thing. Okay, 6 of 12, we haven't been yet. Let's wait for that question to come first, actually. Okay, so spacer versus nebulizer. Yeah, level evidence. Level evidence. So in case of children, can vary sometimes. Then, you know, like spray, that all single, then post. Yeah, so a few things are managed actually now RCH guideline you know in this case six puff why the children is five years of age group which is less than six years now here is the RCH guideline reference here is the RCH guideline you know reference probably just give me a second yeah like this one if you can see the six puff is less than six years, 12 puff is more than six years. So if that question changes, I repeat, if this question somehow changes, like what to do next, six puff or 12 puff? I ask you this question, my dear. Is it a six puff or is it a 12 puff in this case? If it is not controlling, are you going to go for six puff or are you going to go for 12 puff? I mean, after the initial trying. So after the initial trying, you know, so what you will do, is going for according to the guideline RCH guideline says six puff is less than six years, twelve puff is more than six. So we'll go for six puff here because it is less than six years. Clear now, guys? Everyone clear about this one? Excellent. Things are matching, you know, with the theory. I mean, things are getting more confident now, guys. Even though you received one to bamboo, but that was my intention. <laughs> As like you know, yeah. So that's the thing. Great. Next question is coming. A six-year-old boy, a six-year-old boy, cough from the 12 month before, 
and sulfitamol and oral prednisolone has been taken. Okay, please highlight what they have taken. Is eczema history, both parents are a smoker. What is the best medication for prevention which is used in inhalational mode? Inhalational mode. Now, they have highlighted this thing, something which is used in inhalational mode. Now, in this case, I think you must be knowing, so five years and it's like prophylactic. If you're thinking, we think about the sodium chromoglycate, which is available in inhalational form, and it is prophylactic. And here is the reference. Did you remember this slide? My dear doctors, did you remember this slide? Now things are coming in your head, like, you know, why that part I taught, because all relevant to the questions, actually. You know, see, some of you must be thinking faster, you know, why that chart he was not teaching or this, that. It's because actually, you know, we focus more things related to exam. And, you know, now you are able to answer things one more perfectly. So you can see one thing. Yes. No problem. Yeah, age five years, which is less than six. So you can go for inhalational mode. No problem. So asthma okay, can again revise. I mean, I would highly recommend you to revise the asthma even today or tomorrow from 868. We'll give a quick revision, you'll be fine. All right. Child who has wheeze and cough at night during exercise given salvitamol fruticasone, what is the best preventer in this case? Keep thinking, guys. Okay, time to reveal the answer. I can see a lot of question answers, like, you know. Now, first, who can tell me one thing? What is this title is about? You know, when you write an email, like, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, some people send us message. I ask, like, you know, why don't you correct your writing? Example, like, when you write, like, there should be something, you know, hello, doctor, or hello, something like that. Then there should be something addressing, like, you know, really enjoying your class. Or then comes, you know, are you available to chat? Or, you know, I have some inquiry uh, about my career, you know, regards doctor this, batch this. Gmail this. As like email you do, same thing, even if you message in the messenger, it looks more professional. Now, it's important to give a title. Whenever you are texting someone, I want to talk something about my career. I want to talk something about the uh, the notes I haven't received. This is Dr. This, this is Dr. This. So this is a professional way of texting when you are messaging someone professional, your supervisor, you know, of course, I'm the supervisor here. So, you know, it's not like, you know, friend, you can write anything, right? That's the thing. Now, coming back to this question, what was the title of this question? What is the title of this question? Is it a just asthma or is it a preventive, preventive asthma or is it an exercise? induced asthma. If you remember last day, we have been taught a lot of things. Among them, one of the topic in, inside the asthma was exercise induced asthma. And I very clearly said one management about exercise induced asthma. Now bring that one out. What is that management here? There's a very specific one thing that is the SABA, short acting beta agonist. So this is the thing. Now this kind of error is not expected in the main exam. Okay. So if you miss this one, really, you need to work on yourself actually to memorizing, getting good gripping rather than just hopping on, hopping off like a new topic to new topic. You need to also understand and memorize the core, what they're asking and you know how you perform as well. Okay. So this is the thing. So Saba is one of the main things. So like, yeah. So exercise induced asthma, what is the main thing? It is not a, pre when I'm telling you again, this is not a preventer deliver question. This is a exercise induced asthma. Please understand this thing. This is a question related to exercise induced asthma. Okay. So is exercise induced asthma mostly required prevention. I mean, you are doing wrong treatment by trying to prevent this, that asthma management 
all you need is to come to the guideline of exercise induced asthma just before exercised to ask them to give short acting beta, beta agonist they will be fine actually you are going in the wrong direction of the treatment okay the i hope it is clear to all of you now like you know it's more about like a conservative like you know especially exercise induced asthma only that salbutamol saba you know and that uh, before exercise they have to take it this that actually these are some of the part actually all right so it is said best prevent i mean best way not asking to do something now or initial or also check this one clearly okay so the line also matters actually are they asking about a immediate management are they asking about the best, like in a long term, like so long term, what do you, they are looking for? The long term, you know, because they're not giving Saba. That's why they are into this position now. Okay, so this is the thing. I hope it is clear to all the days. So 868 page again, John Murta Gate edition. Please try see that one. Okay. John Murta exercise induced asthma. Let me um, show you some reference probably from the John Murta. This is a guideline related to exercise induced asthma. Please try to find out what is mentioned. It is taken from the RCH guideline, so you can trust this one. So very clearly mentioned, exercise induced asthma best managed by inhalated short acting beta agonist. Inhalated short acting beta agonist. I hope that is clear too. All of you. This is taken from our CH guideline. I hope that's extremely clear now. Moving forward, guys, we have to finish few things quickly. 50 year man with a hypertension, asthma, and reflux nephropathy labs. Okay, given high urea, high creatinine, protein urea is high, protein urea is indicator, kidneys in trouble. What is the choice of antihypertension? So, asthma, antihypertension. Did I mention that one somewhere in the first class? I think I remember, yes. So, what do you think? So, what is the choice? Answer would be low certain. Now, what sort of drug is a low certain? Is it a ARB or a C? So, our choice in asthma and hypertension is ARB. Now, why this one is not? Now, why this one we try to not trying to avoid? Because it can cause the dry cough. And when you have dry cough or any cough, you can't breathe. So that will aggravate your asthma. I hope that is clear to all of you. All right. Well done, guys. So here is the thing I see can cause cough, ARB is preferred. Here is a line as a reference like drug that can induce like a lot of asthma. Please take note on this one, especially like AC is there actually. So AC, aspirin, these particular things, cholinergic drugs, CTH, mm, some other things like even some antibiotic can cause it as well. So you see a big list here, actually, compared to what we learned previously. Here is a little big list to follow. Okay, so please remember this. They can replace anything. Here you can see um, they have mentioned ARB. It was easy for you to answer. What if they put the option as a different scenario and they put like options like, you know, sulfasalazine, this, that, actually. So that is also should not be used, actually, in that way. Great. Answer is a two actually. Low certain is ARB, low certain is a zebra. Low certain is often the you know choice of antihypertensives. In many cases, often a choice of antihypertensive. Okay, coming to the next one. Patient with pulmonary edema, saturation is 90. Six liter by Hudson mask. Next management. So you can see one thing that oxygen delivery process related one question they often prefer. So last day, did I mention something about oxygen delivery system? 
guys did i show something about the oxygenation or oxygen delivery probably yes now come back to on the basis of that one this is 92 and this is below 92 percent but is it below 82 or it below i mean not really so do we need a intubation or ventilation this particular things like bipap yeah out of the option so this is using exclusion method so by that method if we go i think non rebreath mask non rebreath mask well done guys we're using here non rebreathing mask so if oxygen saturation is more uh, below and the things you know you can follow the last test one so yeah great yeah this one is better so below 92 this chart to follow non rebreath non rebreath if 85 or below then non invasive ventilation cpap or bpap or intubation clear now everyone is this thing clear to all the doctors showing that question again so this is below 92 so below 92 means just following this particular chart nothing else yeah nothing abstract don't overthink anything it's very straightforward Next one, a known asthmatic patient presents to the emergency with stratus asthmaticus. Now, let me clarify this one. What is your thinking about stratus asthmaticus? Maybe I didn't mention last day specifically. Uh, it's mostly in MBBS short note we used to learn, actually. We believe that you know that term. What do you mean by stratus asthmaticus, guys? Stratus asthmaticus is nothing but, you know, acute severe asthma. Stratus asthmaticus is nothing but acute severe asthma. There's a difference between status asthmaticus and status epilepticus, right, guys? Status asthmaticus and status epilepticus are different thing, not the same thing, right? Status epilepticus, in between his unconscious period, there will be seizure. Yeah, so that's even more dangerous, all right? Different. So status asthmaticus, I could severe asthma, nothing else. Before arrival to the hospital, he took salbutamol inhaler, but they didn't improve his symptom. What should be given here? So you try it. Salbutamol inhaler, not improved, what to do now? One thing is missing, so saturation is probably missing, but it's still we can answer actually. So if it doesn't work in the beginning, if it doesn't work in the beginning, then what we can do is oral steroid. Remember that the story, story is very important actually, right? I mean, if you if you remember, I mentioned that I was, I was doing a course in, on the respiratory and one of the colleague was regretting that, you know, because his relative called at the night time and, you know, he forgot to give that separately oral corticosteroid. He said, okay, go to the city center or something and take nebulizer. But he could have rather just give him oral corticosteroid. Yes. You will not lose any patient. So acute or life-threatening asthma, severe asthma, this section has been reference taken from um, Davidson. So... You can check that one. So prednisolone has been mentioned. Alternatively, you can also, yeah, hydrocortisone you can give. Never ignore a night call. Yes, well done. And some level evidence, evidence injection steroid and oral steroid, another level evidence. Oral steroid and injection hydrocortisone is equal, similar level evidence normally we know iv works more better than the oral here is an exception that oral steroid works almost same effectively as injection hydrocortisone level evidence all right next one we are good okay a child Okay, it's a four-year child with a fever of 39 and cough as well for three days. Ricola is thinking. He is, he, he is having wheeze and minimal lung sign on the X-ray. X-ray showing pleural effusion. This is a good one. X-ray showing pleural effusion. Ask what investigation to do for further assisting. As I mentioned last day, pleural effusion is pleural effusion is a disease. My quick inquiry to all of you. Is pleural effusion is a disease? No, it's an indication of some other disease. It can be exudative, it can be transudative. It's a sign of some disease, actually. Now, what we can do here, we have yeah, four options. 
So what we can do here is a going for blood culture actually. Okay, so probably it's a suspected, maybe you can see fever is there, 39 degrees centigrade. So don't you think it's, is it a possibility that it can be pneumonia at certain point? Because pleural effusion is there, high grade fever, cough, and all these things are there. So do you think the diagnosis can be pneumonia? And answer is a yes. So well done, guys, actually. Pneumonia, guys, have you followed our note on pneumonia if not you can follow and those not received you will definitely receive tonight actually don't worry so there's a better option so we do x-ray x-ray has been done in this case and then comes the blood culture then the plural effusion like you know take the fluid from that space and do the testing this is the main you know how we do the investigation of choices a quick question this all thing we're talking about is a typical pneumonia so that, that means there is an another option of atypical pneumonia let's see how much you remember from the last day about atypical pneumonia atypical pneumonia mm, no fever in no that's not correct my dear plural efficient can have fever definitely it depends on exudative and transudative now coming to that one atypical atypical why they called atypical because mostly asymptomatic even though asymptomatic they show some sign what sign they show dry cough so here is a nice line for all of you what is that like never ignore <laughs> a what a dry cough so in asthma we learn never ignore a night call and in pneumonia we are learning in, in case of a children, probably high likely, that never ignore a dry cough in a children, right? It can be turned into a, 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 yeah. So what we need to do, do an X-ray. And do you think X-ray will give you a lot of finding? Yes. X-ray will be conclusive finding, actually. A lot finding would be there. So there's a famous line, you know, X-ray finding more than more than clinical symptoms. I hope so. I mentioned that extra findings is more visible than the clinical finding. This is particularly for atypical pneumonia. Another few keywords. Um, if you look into the extra, what extended finding we are talking about? Ground glass appearance. Ground glass is quite common actually. Typical. Pneumonia, you know, you will find a different level of consolidation, middle of consolidation, both two lobes consolidation. But in this case, mostly you will find, find like this, like a ground glass for the atypical pneumonias. Great. Good job, guys. Moving to the next one. Child with a fever, they didn't mention the temperature. Original exam will mention your temperature, definitely. Cough, uh, suspected pneumonia. Let's, let's assume this is a high fever. Okay, this is high fever. Child with a uh, signs are normal, extra showing left plural effusion. What is the next management? So here, one thing has been done and that is the X-ray has been done. So X-ray has been done, then what else to do next? So in this case, what we can go with a blood culture. Remember, X-ray, then blood culture, and then you can do the remaining things actually, like plural fluid aspiration. Then comes the plural fluid testing and the aspiration. Okay. I remember one of my friend was saying Balad culture. Okay. So it's okay. You know, uh, locally people can say anything. <laughs> That's fine. So X-ray, Balad culture and that aspiration actually. Anyways. Uh, okay. Now, one thing, many times in John Murtang, one line is written, serious disorder that should not be missed. In the beginning of many chapters, it is written, serious disorder that should not be missed. Okay, you're obsessed with the Balat culture. Yeah, okay, no problem. And now I think many will start talking like Balat culture. You know? So anyways, now it's a very, very important 
um, something here. Uh, we'll see that part in neurology again, talking about a, a very classic meningitis, meningitis. You must be knowing about meningitis, guys. Meningitis, you know, high fever again, high fever, fever, rash. Then your conscious level would be affecting neck rigidity, right? Like then your um, few parts would be irritated. So they, will, they might have vomiting or nausea tendency. And they can also associate it with rash. This rash is present or not, that is very important. Because if presented with rash, what is your diagnosis? The dangerous one. If associated with rash, that is actually Neisseria meningitis. It is called purpuric rash, non-blanching rash. Okay. So this is the thing. If that one is present, Neisseria meningitis if with associated with rash, maybe a sign of sepsis. So in that case, we start the antibiotic first, then go for the blood culture. Is it clear to dear doctors? Only if sign of meningitis, only if rash is present together, then not the blood culture, antibiotic. Why? We don't have time. We can lose the patient anytime. This is a big emergency. Meningitis is a very big emergency. And among the meningitis, Neisseria meningitis is extremely, extremely dangerous. You lose the patient in 30 minutes. You'll see in front of your eyes. Has anyone deal with meningitis in their life? ICU or in, in the wards and the thing? What was the fate of the patient? I mean, survived or died? Okay. I think, I think those of you who are working in ICU has seen, I guess, many, not one actually, right? Okay. The ICU ones and other ones. Anyways, so other type of meningitis, what do we do? Other type of meningitis, it is different. What we do is a blood culture first. So if vitally stable in a meningitis case and no rash, then only we can take risk by doing the blood culture so that we can give the appropriate antibiotic, correct? Appropriate antibiotic. I have seen, I've lost patient even with meningitis. Okay. Working in ICU is, you know, sometimes, you know, also hard on the doctors, right? We get used to at certain point, but, you know, losing a life is always been, doesn't feel good. So, guys, pneumonia, you can see from our John Mutrak 393 page for a quick revision, you can go. Yes. Yes. In other cases, my dear, you know, you can go for empirical or you know, do the test and then start treating. Um, to know more about pneumonia, um, 393 John Murtak. To know more about meningitis, you have to go to back index of John Murtak and then read it. I would recommend not to uh, read it now. Keep it for neurology would be better. Okay. But revising pneumonia again is very, very important. Okay. A bit population health type question, but even it's a respiratory question. In Australia. Okay. Which of the following is the most frequent cause of death in a previously well three years kid? Only new doctors will answer. Only our new doctors will answer. What do you think? I think most will go for answering this one. Uh, whereas some will think pneumonia. Because we are teaching pneumonia, and probably, but the original is drowning. You remember, you know, there was a lot of meme. How society thinks about you, how your mom thinks about you, how your friends see about you, and how you are actually originally. So it's <laughs> this is kind of like a question like that actually so it's a three-year kid actually now infant death syndrome it's actually one year kid infant this can be correct in one year in one year not now actually australia is a land every side there is sea every side there is sea so there's a lot of death happens every year so downing is so common in australia and they love swimming they love surfing you know surfing related question also comes surfing you know what is surfing, guys? You have seen probably in the TV in past. 
but you know it can be a great thing that if you go and start learning the surfing okay you can also surf along with some sharks how about that feeling <laughs> okay recently i saw a video some people are you know uh, in the beach you know they are just jumping here and there and suddenly a shark were going actually near to them actually so just be careful you know they don't mind maybe a very nice lunch <laughs> okay so downing yes yeah bondi bondi is the best beach actually i think i think world's top five beach bondi yeah i haven't seen better i mean i haven't been to miami want to go someday definitely but um, what i have seen i've been to many beaches in world i think i've been to 29 30 countries so i think the best beach i have seen is bondi i think yes um I think all of them are in Australia, I guess. Bondi, I like the Palm Beach, my personal favorite. I mean, one side river, one side sea, and you get up in the hill, Palm Beach and La Perros, where the Mission Impossible shooting has been done, right? Yeah, so like that, that three is my favorite, you know. All are in Sydney, by the way, yeah. All are different. See, Palm Beach is different. La Perros has a different view. And of course, the Bondi is like, you know, party place. <laughs> Uh, great guys so sudden infant death syndrome is like a uh, less than one year yes so here our answer is a downing great don't worry we'll make mistake here we'll not make mistake in the main exam all right i'll hold here for a few seconds some doctors want to read this part okay i'm holding here for one minute within a one minute you guys can read this so infant death syndrome is in one year, but by three years, it is rare. So E is correct. Now, if I ask you in general in Australia, most common cause of death, most common cause of death in generally, what will be the answer? answer is a road traffic accident now this is i would like to tell all of you some of you will be very excited because cars are crazy cheap you know you will get a second hand bmw bench this like you know sometimes quite temptating when you go there actually you know because in in country we can't afford this kind of car it's unimaginable actually right like you know bmw mercedes bench but it's like you know in UK, I call <laughs> many time I call Uber. You know, the Mercedes Benz comes to pick me. <laughs> you know, so imagine you know, like the way we give value to these cars, you know, it's it's not there actually. You know, so those are even used as a Uber taxi and all this thing. One time, you know, I found Tesla. Would you believe that? You know, I called a Uber and Tesla <laughs> came actually <laughs> to pick me. So uh, I was also surprised and. Friends are also in front of me. Like, bhai, is this Tesla? So I, I'm also thinking, is this the you know cab that came? Really, you know. So this is only thing left actually. So yeah, yeah it's okay actually. Anyone has Tesla, he's trying to clear his depth. Maybe he you know buy that Tesla, and you know he has a lot of depth now actually. So he's trying to you know <laughs> go through the Uber, and yeah, that's the thing. Also, you know. Um, just to add something, you know, if you have a better car, you will get better deal. I mean, if you're not driving, I mean, I'm telling you one thing. If you move to Australia and if you know driving, you can do little driving. It's it does no harm in doing any sort of job. You can do Uber job easily, actually. It's just riding. It doesn't matter and you can earn a lot, actually. You don't have to give even income tax or this that much, actually. Yeah. So that's the thing. Yeah. All right, guys. Next question, guys, like, you know, a um, child with a seven-year-old came with a uh, fever 38.7, looks tired, lethargy. He has grunting on examination. His chest is clear. What is the diagnosis? I know it's a bit a uh, pediatric. This part, we'll teach this one in pediatrics, but somewhere it's related. Now, it's a seven-year. What do you think? So it's a pneumonia, actually. The word, key word is grunting. Not some good series. It's a sign, bad situation. 
correct. And also you can see fever, lethargic. Okay, so all is indicating towards pneumonia. Now let's try to clarify these things. If it is croup, some people say crop, actually it's croup. So croup actually like, what is the clinical feature? They will tell you barking cough. Barking cough. Uh, even in pneumonia, chest can be clear. Many pneumonia we have find chest is clear, right? I mean, I'm seeking some uh, opinion from the experts. I mean, a lot of doctors been practiced. We have seen a lot of pneumonia cases. Chest can be a bit clear in the beginning, right? So don't get into that one. Just like chest is initially clear, then does it mean this is not pneumonia? Yeah. So it, it can be, you know, it can be atypical as well. Yes. So for croup, it can be barking cough and stridor. Barking cough and stridor. So not present in our question. Okay. Next coming is a very, very important bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis is expected to have wheeze less than one year. Some cases also mention tracheal tag. Okay, so we is less than on your tracheal tag and history of respiratory tract infection. History of respiratory tract infection, like a seven days back. And after that, he's developing wheeze. So this is more classic for bronchiolitis. Last but not the least, the epiglottitis. Out of all of them, which one is most dangerous and serious, do you think? Out of all of them, which one is most? E4, epiglottitis, E4, emergency the bigger emergency is epiglottitis they will somewhere like follow you with eyes like you know not moving the head just intense look they will be just following you right so epiglottitis and of course they have findings and the finding is you know strider again here so here is the expiratory expiratory strider here in group, inspiratory stridor, here expiratory stridor, they, they are toxic, they follow you with eyes. Actually, yes, X-ray has finding like thumb printing sign, this, that. Usually they don't give that in exam because everyone understood that. Yeah, so expiratory stridor, toxic. Important information about epiglottitis. Do not examine the throat. Do not examine the throat. Why? Because uh, some of the part can be constricted and uh, the possibilities of a spasm actually, high chance of spasm. So do not examine the throat unless an anesthesiologist is present. Unless he's in OT, unless an anesthesiologist. So do not examine the throat in a GP center. Last but not the least, a very popular, which you guys all like, which is called tripod. How many of you have a tripod at your home? <laughs> okay. I do have two, three in my office, one here as well. Okay, so tripod. So here is a very classic tripod position. It's a very classic tripod position, actually. So tripod position and looking you intensely. That's the epiglottis. I'll teach you more this thing in that um, pediatrics, definitely. But this is a way to differentiate. Yeah, there's a way to differentiate. Yeah, so here is a chart. Here is a chart like group. Epiglottitis, bronchiolitis. You will find this particular type of chart in our pediatric note section, which I don't recommend now to study much actually. But for now, for now, just remember this explanation would be enough. For now, this explanation would be enough. Okay. All good. I'm holding here for a minute. If you want to see this chart, it's up to you actually. So diagnosis pneumonia and group epiglottitis, bronchiolitis, some features, but I'd like to teach this one in the pediatrics in future. Okay, we're about to start. All right, guys. So let's go and start. Um, yeah, so pneumonia, guys, again, reminder, 
to study from John Murtagh and from our notes. Quick next question. Bronchiectasis, guys, before going to the you know, this question, tell me about bronchiectasis scenarios. Scenario of bronchiectasis. I explained last day. Now it's your turn. Quickly, just you know, bring all the features of bronchiectasis. Okay, let me start. Wheeze. <laughs> then you fill up the next. Yeah, cough, sputum, good job. Clubbing, well done. Hemoptysis, yes. How about the lung finding? How about the lung finding? Crackles, yes, of course, crackles, yes, well done. Yes, yeah, someone sent a tram track in the radiology, tram track in the radiology, well done. Well done, guys. Okay, so we get to know a lot of things. So because since it's a chronic disease, of course, they will have breathlessness eventually, right? Breathlessness, hemoptysis, well, clubbing, many things are quite a common actually. And they produce a lot of productive cough. It has a lot of similarity with the COPD. It's also a obstructive lung disease, right? This is also obstructive lung disease. So residual volume increase, total lung capacity also in, and tram track line in the radiology actually. Now coming to that one, because if someone is in bronchiectasis, did I mention last day that bronchiectasis people also has to take prophylactic antibiotic, like seven days antibiotic in a month. Did I mention something like that? Prophylactic antibiotic, always remember bronchiectasis. Now, which one is the treatment? Because the respiratory zones, so lot of you know gram negative culprits, lot of you know gram negative culprits will be out there. Now answer is a well done if you have mentioning, you know, IV tigerselin. Very good for gram negative IV tigerselin, and it's IV of course, not going for this oral one of course IV superimposed pneumonia IV tigerselin level. Little more information about the bronchiectasis. As in last day in the class, we also gave. You can see the this radiology has a lot of features. Last day, we also discussed about that actually, right? So this bronchiectasis last day we discussed. We have seen a lot of dilated bronchial, and this is a permanent dilatation. Permanent dilatation. All right. So we have finished that one last day. Let's not get there again. Let's moving forward to next slide. Well done, guys. Yes, bronchiectasis radiolosi. Bronchiectasis radiolosi. You can see a lot of dilatation, a lot of chronic things. And in the CT scan, on the other hand, we can see, you know, diffuse, like, you know, like dilated bronchial, dilated bronchial. So eventually we need a CT scan, guys. Eventually we need CT scan. Uh, some of you are, you know, about antibiotic asking questions, actually. You know, see, I mean, it's, it's superimposed pneumonia. Of course, you'll give it IV antibiotic, I think. So I think try improve, like, you know, because antibiotic is not like something to ask a question. You know, when you say it, like, just accept it. Okay, just that's the thing, actually, because it's given in the guideline, given in the books, actually. Okay, just like, you know, not really a cool question, like, you know, why this one and not that antibiotic. Antibiotic, just follow any guidelines, actually, you know, you'll find the relevant, actually. It's not a very cool question. I mean, when you say why this antibiotic, not that antibiotic, because it's in the guidelines, my dear. Okay, moving forward. Moving forward. Yes, next question. 65-year man with a history of smoking previously comes to your office with peripheral edema, race. JVP and hepato jugular reflux. Okay, that's interesting. Looks like this part. Maybe somewhere related to heart failure. Maybe uh, blood pressure is this fine basal crackle. Now there's a crackle now. I know where it's going. What is the most appropriate diagnosis? Now it's your turn to. So smoker, heart failure feature. This, that. You guys are very smart. Looks like yeah, you are used to it. The MC examiner's question now. Well done, guys, actually. So good answer, call Palmonari. You started to, you know, identify the who comes now, right? So they know they might, some of you might be thinking about the COPD, but you know, like this is actually call Palmonari. Well done, guys. Okay, so a heart disease due to lung cause. A heart disease due to lung cause. Okay, here's a small thing about call Palmonari. Corporate is a condition most commonly arise from, you know, guys, if in the screen something is coming, you can just put it in the slide, actually. Put it in the side. 
Colpotonic condition mostly arises from the complication of high pressure and pulmonary things. Um, there's a topic pulmonary edema that usually comes in our CVS actually. Okay, so don't worry. All right. So right-sided heart failure, this, that. So this thing will come again in the CVS. So mitral stenosis. Now, quick question, mitral stenosis, let's see your ideas. Mitral stenosis is a right-sided heart disease or left-sided heart disease? Quick question. Mitral stenosis, right-sided heart disease or left-sided heart, you know, problem. It's a left-sided actually. If this is the heart, for so example, if this is the heart, here is a mitral valve and this is the left. So mitral valve if it's stenosed, if it is narrow, the blood is coming from the left atrium will be pressure will be high and in the long run it will create pressure in the pulmonary vasculature so intra left atrial pressure raised so pulmonary vasculature pressure will be raised then you know arterial pressure will be raised so patient will develop pulmonary edema even is that a possibility increase hydrostatic pressure there will be edema according to the definition of edema increase hydrostatic pressure means blood pressure means leading to edema this is the thing that is happening here all right so eventually you can also see pulmonary edema so actually in, in core pulmonary the heart failure features would be there okay we'll talk about more about the heart failure in the and pulmonary edema in the Cardiovascular. So, core pulmonary. Here are some features. Right sided heart failure. Like, you know, the problem in the left heart, left valve, that causing problem in the lung. Uh, sorry, problem is in the here, in the left heart, that causing problem in the lung. Lung causing pressure in the ventricle, then again, this right atrium, then eventually in the system. So, right sided heart failure is quite common. Now you understand it's like a traffic. It's like a traffic jam, actually. So then heart, then superior vena cava, everything is affected. Then eventually liver is also affected on the back flow, right? Because there's like a traffic jam. <laughs> In your country, is traffic jam is common, guys? In your country, is it common traffic? In Dhaka, I mean, welcome to Dhaka if you <laughs> looking for some traffic. Just to see traffic, you should come to Dhaka someday. Yes. Okay. I think Dhaka and Karachi are the worst, I think, in the world. I think, you know, maybe one, two places in Nigeria as well. Okay. Delhi, I have been to many times. So if you are complaining, you should visit Dhaka <laughs> one time. <laughs> okay. You, you have a metro line. So like a nine or 10 metro line in Delhi. So... Uh, it doesn't really matter actually yeah i hope so you know in dhaka the good news is metro line is going on so i think after seven eight years it will be a little bit relieving i think yes. dhaka traffic is not horrible actually you know, it's just horrible horrible feeling yeah i start walking even longer distance actually even in the footpath there is so many things people are everywhere actually yeah well done well said yeah Population is just increasing. Okay, coming back to this one, core pulmonary, a heart disease due to lung cause. And these are the so shortness of base because of the pulmonary edema, hypoxia edema, raised JPP. Clear, guys? Core pulmonary clear? I want to be sure everyone is okay. My dear, you know, like, you know, a lot of exceptional things are not going, actually. No, just remain focused on the MC. Remain focused on the MC. Remain what I said. You know, we are not here to do hypothetical researches, okay? You know, focus on the questions, my dear. Okay, a patient is recently traveling to Asia with cough, low-grade fever, and pain in the epigastrium with the chest. What is the diagnosis here? So there is a travel history. Travel bag. <laughs> Some travel bags are very cute, right? Anyways, so with a cough, low-grade fever, epigastrium, and chest x-ray, what is the diagnosis? So answer for this one is easy peasy one. So short travel history, I think I would search for short travel history, you will think about viral pneumonia. One thing it is missing in this question is the intubation period. 
but let's just think, you know, if it's in the develops within just in few days, maybe in three days, like less than a week and a fever and uh, this, that, it, it can be pneumonia. It can be a atypical pneumonia, viral pneumonia. All right. If intubation period is more than two weeks and low grade fever, then what you will think and being to Asian countries. So intubation period is more than two weeks and low grade fever and probably cough. You'll think about the tuberculosis in that case. Uh, visiting to a country like Zakarta, there was a question in MC. By the way, guys, where is Zakarta? You know, where is Zakarta present? <laughs> okay, now some people quickly answered that one. Some people are thinking, you know, some people are thinking. It's in Indonesia, by the way, guys. Now, is it common to have malaria in, in a city like Zakarta? Is it more common to have a malaria in a city like Zakarta? The answer is a no, according to the guidelines. It is a central city, so you're not expecting malaria there. Rather, there was an option in the question, dengue or dengue, whatever you say. So which one would be preferable? So uh, fever in first week, after coming back, fever in first week. So we'll think more about We'll think more about the dengue or dengu, right? Which is more common in the central city. So dengue and the chikungunya. Guys, please keep it in mind. Dengue, chikungunya related question also comes in the exam. Okay, keep that one. Malaria will be a little bit more longer intubation period, right? More than I think 10, 14 days will be the intubation period as well. All right. Again, the oxygen uh, delivery system related question. I think you can answer that one very easily. Specific, let me highlight 85%. So a easy peasy answer would be, yeah, now you're confident, right? Now I can see the confidence. This was the question. So 85 or below 85, our question was 85. The answer is a CPAP. Well done, guys. Next one. See, older person, actually. So be aware of that one. Elderly uh, admitted to the hospital following a community-acquired pneumonia. Last year, this term came, right? CAP or community-acquired pneumonia. And their culprits, we also learned. I mean, the microorganism. Received antibiotic and going oil on fifth day. Now she develops chill and rigor and high fever on the fourth day. What is likely explanation? Now, can it be? I, I, I mentioned like some of them catch each everything I say well. Did I mention last day somewhere that, you know, one of the complication of pneumonia can be emphysema? You know, I'm not sure, like, you know, if someone remembers that. Only one complication I mentioned last day. Like there can be a lot of complication, but emphysema to remember. Why I mentioned that? There must be a reason because this is the question and this is something that came in the exam often. Okay, so in this one, the answer is emphysema. Now, quick question, isn't it hospital-acquired pneumonia is more common, some of you are thinking. Now, why I didn't pick up that one? Hospital-acquired pneumonia, why I didn't pick up that one? There is a time duration for hospital-acquired pneumonia. Is the fifth day or fourth day is common? No. So hospital-acquired pneumonia, like, you know, if since more than 48 hours, we can exclude the hospital-acquired pneumonia. Clear now? So 40, yeah, some books is 74, like 40 to 72 hours, we can exclude the hospital acquired pneumonia. Another question, have you seen cannula related infection while your practice, while your internship? I have seen few. Now, why it is not the cannula related one? But in cannula related one, um, there will be some swelling of the hands and these things they will mention like swelling of the hands redness of the hand phlebitis pain in the arm yes they will mention about this so nothing mentioned like this so that is also out from this question so this one is out this one is out because of the duration now pulmonary embolism okay now due to hospital stay it can be now what point is absent for pulmonary embolism to clarify chill rigor high fever but what is the main feature of Pulmonary embolism, breathlessness is absent. 
there, there will be severe breathlessness, which is absent here. Okay, so it's not pulmonary embolism. Well done, guys. Very good job. Very impressive. Very, very impressive. Well done, actually. Okay. Now, for a new topic to get into, uh, do you want a break here, guys? Do you want a small break here? Yes, I think uh, you deserve a break. Let's go for a break and come back and finish the remaining half of the class. All right. You guys are doing well. I mean, I I didn't expect this much. So let me open a timer for you guys. We're going to the break. You like the small animations? I hope, my dear. Those of you joining the class first time, these are the main some of the topics to learn, which we already discussed last day. A video has been also uploaded in that YouTube. Maybe you can see that one as well. So asthma, COPD, bronchial disease, lung cancer. These are the page numbers to learn. Mesothelioma, sarcoid, pneumonia, to let in tuberculosis. Okay, and additionally, like in oxygen therapy, this that which I didn't in, involved here because it's not present in. John Murtag in that way. Okay, but we have taught that one as well. Yes. And as you all can see, uh, this is the handbook. Guys, have you finished that handbook? Handbook once yet? Have you finished that handbook relevant once yet? If not, maybe tomorrow you can finish that. If not, maybe tomorrow you can finish that. Okay, good. No problem. This is how we learn. This is how we learn. John Murtag, MC handbook, my notes. I mean, and then this recall. Then we become more specific then we become more specific. Well done, actually. Yeah, this is the only respiratory part. JT given advance so that, you know, when respiratory finishes and, you know, if you are too studious, no, no, like, you know, in seven days, too less for me for finishing respiratory. So for you, JT is there, okay? You can start studying. We have a we have you know tensed student like that. You don't see if I show you my inbox, you know, why this is like a, I'm just sitting um on a volcano <laughs> all the time. So it's okay. I mean, I know people are excited and things actually. Doctor, I finished respiratory. You know, what's next? Please tell me. You know, no, okay, come on. I mean, I know you're brilliant, but let's hold on. Not everyone is as brilliant as you, probably. That's okay, no problem. Great. All right. We will always have, you know, some atil in our classes, right? You know, we used to call atil. I don't know what do you call, you know, in, in three years, like, you know, the uh, character Chatur. Did you remember? You know, you know, one in one or two in the class, they are always, you know, hyped. Maybe teachers pupil as well. Uh, what do you call in your country? You know, there's a term we call, you know, atil Chatur or Chaturingam. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, these characters are also necessary. Seeing them, some people also intend to study. So I like them, technically. Yes. Okay, guys. Let's go for a... Uh, guys, don't take it seriously if any message and your character is like that. Uh, I'm with you guys, actually. If others are not with you, I'm with you guys. It's like, no problem. Keep your excitement on. You are here to pass the exam. That's why you are overexcited, over pumped. Okay. So a nine minutes break. Going to start. See you in nine minutes, guys. Thank you.
Okay, dear doctors, let's get started. Please confirm me one more time if you can see my screen well and if you can hear me well. So is it loud and clear, guys, to enough to continue? Excellent. Okay. Now, this is a little different um, question. It might be hematological or something, uh, but this weird question many times comes in the exam, unfortunately. Now, this is a topic actually, welder strom macroglobinemia patient came with a fever and record, fever, chill, record, right? Lower lobe pneumonia and some infections like this admitted and started ampicillin. After minimal time, generalized vascular rash appeared, asking the management. Now, I have to know a little bit about the welder strom, actually. So, this is like a little different. Uh, why it came up? Because of like showing some features like pneumonia. Okay. So, basically, on the basis of welder strom, you have to give a treatment here, actually. Any, any idea or any cases. Now, sometimes um, giving antibiotic can give gives rise to, you know, welder strom type features. One of them is a cyst is ampicillin. So giving that ampicillin can lead to this particular thing to happen, actually. Some cases of welder strom, you can also treat with prednisolone too. But before that one, it's ideal that, you know, you cease the offending agent. I repeat, sees the offending agent. Many times you will also find questions like this. We call it compare and contrast type questions. Example, uh, serotonin syndrome. Have you ever heard about this condition, serotonin syndrome? Now, serotonin syndrome is a condition that can happen if you use SSRI plus MAO, these two drugs together can lead to serotonin syndrome. All the autonomic activities will increase in the body plus a lot of features in the eye and so on. But in any way, serotonin syndrome uh, is popular in the exam and they will ask you what to do next. Okay. So no matter, many things can be offered as a drug and this, that. The one thing is common, it is mentioned, you know, withdraw the drugs. Okay, so it has to be drugs, both drugs. Some says, okay, no, only one drug to stop. No, according to, it was not present in other books, but in CMDT, it was present. That withdraw of offending all the agents, actually. Not only the SSRI, SSRI, MAO, or SSRI, or Tramadol. Remember, this is popular from the for the exam. SSRI, but very famous drug, Tramadol hydrochloride. Remember, Tramadol can also cause SSRI, actually. Maybe some informations can be new. Don't get panicked. Time to time, I'll tell you these things, actually. So SSRI and this tramadol can also... There's a list of drug, list of drug for serotonin syndrome. We'll supply you that one, actually, someday. So SSRI and tramadol, this particular combination can cause it. So you have to stop the both one. You have to stop the both. That is the main thing. Stop the both offending agents. So same like here, C's ampicillin or C's the drug causing it. Okay, so you will also find many questions like that in MC. Like, you know, what is causing it? You need to stop that one first, actually. Okay, great. So uh, a little bit about the welder strom, maybe we should also need to know. Is that a cancer? My quick question. Talking about the welder strom, is, is that particular thing is a cancer? Let me find out. Let us find out uh, what is welder strom. Yeah, so, yeah. Now, in short, about welder strom. So, overproduction of immunoglobin M from the malignant B cell. So, the answer, is it a cancer? It is a yes, actually. And leading to hyperviscosity, though these particular features can be there. So, you please take a screenshot of this one. This one may not be present in note. I guess so, actually. Okay, so this is like a separate, like a... Uh, topic actually yes not a very regular one actually so only for this one maybe you can take a screenshot actually yes others we have a note already there okay now here is the thing you know uh, important so it's a cancer it can cause hyperviscosity and leading to this particular uh, problem 
the treatment is important here. You know, plasma pheresis is an initial therapy to remove the IgM and the viscosity. Long term treatment, rituximab or prednisolone. So, you see, prednisolone is in the option. I repeat, prednisolone, prednisolone is in the option. Okay, yeah, someone said it's correct. Paraproteinemia can be another thing. Uh, let me show you another thing here from Welderstrom. So again, disorder of the B cell, like malignant monoclonal compotry, blood related some cancer here. Elevated IgM is the key thing. They can also have Raynaud's phenomenon, like, you know, the hand changes color due to cold. That is the Raynaud's. So that can be so some neurological feature, other systemic feature, it can be. Uh, yes, sir, LDH race. LDH is raised in many of the cancers, I hope. In many of the blood related cancer, LDH can be raised. And last but not the least, in the test, actually. So this question we have also seen with coming with test. So bone marrow biopsy. Okay, guys. So if they offer you bone marrow biopsy, please choose that one. Okay. So bone marrow biopsy. Treatment, your aim is to remove this excess IgM that is produced. So excess immunoglobin removed by plasma cephalosis, actually. Otherwise, for this cancer, you can also treat it with chemotherapy. Is it clear, everyone? I mean, in short, actually, I'm just trying to tell this thing in little short, actually, just giving you more clear view so that you can answer that. So, Welderstrom, um, macroglobinular B cell disorder, B cell disorder, M, um, like, you know, plasma M protein that has been raised, actually. So, that's why we call it a malignant cancer in a way. And we usually try investigation by looking into the blood picture and bone marrow biopsy bone marrow biopsy and we seize the offending agent and then if necessary we can treat accordingly right so prednisolone prednisolone name was there rituximab like some some names were there right so mainly prednisolone you know we remember so why not prednisolone here because we have a better option like in seize ampicillin is the answer clear guys in short this is about the Welderstrom macular. It is a little unusual, but please remember this. These are the time to time extra thing for MC, what it's required to learn. I'll tell you actually. Without like not attending classes, difficult to know about this kind of topics actually. Yeah, and Question Bank does not have this kind of collection. Okay, like the what is the good impact and bad impact? Question Bank is good, but Question Bank does not have everything. Yeah, that's one of the things. Some Question Bank has a lot of errors, like Mplux has so many errors, actually, you know, we have seen. Amedex has also errors, but it's better, I think. There's also MCQ Bank. You can also follow that, actually, okay? So one of the Question Bank will post in coming days after closing the group, actually. You can download it, and you can also follow that, one, actually. You may not need to buy Question Bank, actually. Anyways, patient went to the, went with his wife to Thailand and came back have dyspnea and altered consciousness and wife is well. Uh, so he is being sick, but his wife is well. Perhaps the wife does something. <laughs> Anyways, uh, check into the mental status as well. What do you think? <laughs> as prepared to intubate that no for this putam was noted and temperature is this. What is the likely diagnosis? Okay. So again, guys, you can see one thing like travel related, some question often popped up. So dyspnea and altered consciousness and temperature actually. Now, here is a line given, no for this putam. This um, decline which option? When I say no for this putam. So it might decline that, you know, this pulmonary embolism thing, probably. And also most cases, like, you know, not a, that long flight, actually. Example, from Australia to USA, that's a very long flight, actually. Australia to Thailand is a direct flight of, like, a seven hours. Okay. Now, coming to that one, the ideal option, what we are thinking here, like, temperature is high, dismiss there, level of consciousness getting affected. So um, it is more with the pneumonia, we believe. Why not DVT? No um, cough, cough muscle swelling, correct? No cough muscle swelling, neither any sign towards the embolism. So these two are out in any way. 
Next coming is a pneumonia. Pneumonia as an intubation period would be, they will give you a long intubation period actually. Okay, so it will be more like that. So fever with chill and rigor and, you know, there will be, there'll be more long intubation period actually. So in this case, I think we are using exclusion method. It is not like it is so evident like it is pneumonia, but sometimes we have to use a method called exclusion method. Like see, no cough, muscle swelling or nothing like that. So it is not probably a DVT, neither from technical point of view, like OCP taker or a recent surgery or a huge long flight, nothing is supporting pulmonary embolism, neither frothy sputum actually. If the patient has frothy sputum, patient also has, we can see dyspnea, then you can suspect the pulmonary embolism, correct. Okay, and malaria like fever, chill and dry, or some cases, jaundice it can be. Now guys, I like to ask you this thing, can malaria condition can be associated with jaundice as well? A quick question to all of you. Other than fever, chill, rag, or some malaria question. I have seen some question that to malaria, there was a little mild yellow discoloration, actually. I have seen with one of the question. But most cases, one thing where common is a long intubation period. Okay? Yeah. Usually not common. Usually not common, but it, it can be. It can be. We have seen it question. You can check check a, check any uh, website or anywhere, like, you know, malaria clinical feature. Is jaundice been there, actually? Yes. So I found it, yes. Okay. So here is a little bit thing about the pneumonia and some related. We have, I think it's in our notes already. Right. It's in our notes already. Fever is not, not a common feature of pulmonary embolism, yes. So fever can decline. So pulmonary embolism, anyway, we're not choosing here. Okay. Now coming to this one, like different condition, different uh, situation regarding pneumonia. I think it's in our AMC note already. I think I explained it last day. So I'm not getting in, into this one here. Please read it by yourself. If it is a typical pneumonia, they might mention also about a rusty sputum. So if you ever see extra term as, as a rusty sputum, it's a possibility or a very sure shot that it is a, you know, that strep pneumonia actually. Great, moving forward. Again, same thing, pneumonia three, uh, three nine three page, you need to study. Um, similar sort of question, let's not go that far. Like let's finish the pneumonia things. Long-term productive cough, this, that, yellow, tink, sputum, yellow, green, tink, sputum. Develop lower, not love, lower lobe pneumonia. What is treatment to give actually? So again, straightforward treatment, you know, in this case, the IV we are following because serious pneumonia, IV to follow and tacrocin tazobactam, very good on the gram negative, very good on the gram negative. Okay, a nine-year boy, a, sorry about a little one to pediatric question because it overlaps sometimes. Uh, fever, tracheal tuck, guys, tracheal tuck came up, age less than one year. <laughs> okay, lethargy ED, give you IV fluid and oxygen is done. But what is your diagnosis? I'm sure many of you already start answering. So fever, cough, and tracheal tuck, intercostal recession. This is the answer. Well done, guys. It is bronchiolitis. You can read more about bronchiolitis from John Murtag, or you can also check it from the RCH guideline. Bronchiolitis, for pediatrics, you also need to know mild, moderate, and severe, and also their management, and of course, the clinical feature. One quick thing about bronchiolitis, what is the culprit? In one one thing I wanted from you. Bronchiolitis, who is the culprit? Who is the microorganism? So answer is a respiratory syncytial virus. And what is the investigation of choice? Are you going for an X-ray or nasopharyngeal swab? This is a second important question. Answer is a nasopharyngeal swab for bronchiolitis. X-ray, not so much recommended. X-ray, not so much recommended. Okay, we'll teach you those things, so do not worry. Bronchiolitis, very cute kid. Uh, noisy breathing, shortness of breath, vomiting, sometimes after feed, um, being irritable, nasal flare, and, you know, cough violently, so bronchiolitis. And main thing is one of the thing is like, if we add the word, wheeze, tracheal tug, these are important to remember also for MCX. And tracheal tag often given 
tracheal tag often given and also low grade fever would be low grade yeah these are the things great moving forward did you know this thing bronchiolitis and bronchitis same thing guys no not really so bronchiolitis is inflammation and swelling of the bronchioles so here is the bronchioles the more smaller one bronchitis or chronic bronchitis is the inflammation swelling of the bronchi so this is a part of the bronchi did you know this information before bronchitis and bronchiolitis so here is the area for bronchiolitis these are the area for the bronchus well done little extra things right i think this is that particular thing i was talking about uh, mild moderate severe uh, mild moderate severe bronchiolitis yes you can also find it from the rch guideline as well you can also find this one from the rch guideline as well this is the mild moderate severe thing i was talking about okay we will come back to this one indefinitely in pediatrics we'll learn yeah and uh, this thing is taken from the rch guideline you can just read from there Next, 60 year old male with a two months history of cough, dyspnea, and two days history of hemoptysis. Your diagnosis. So, cough, hemoptysis, and asking for a diagnosis. So, many of you jumped into lung cancer. Can it be good pastors? My quick question. Why not good pastors? I'm expecting another term here that is hematuria. So 2H for good pastors, which is not present here. It's out. So lung cancer, pneumonia, TB. So two months. So long history of cough. Long history of cough. It can be TB. It can be. It can be also lung cancer. But the person has a history of hemoptysis as well. Also, the person has a history of breath, you know, breathlessness as well. Is breathlessness is a common feature for tuberculosis, dear doctors? Is breathlessness is a common feature for uh, tuberculosis? Unless it's a complication, TB later develops pneumonia, that's a different thing. But usually, is that a common one? Not really. So, by going little exclusion method and all this thing, this is a thing, lung cancer. Everyone agreed? Yes, I think this is a lung cancer. No renal involvement, so not good postures. Chronic cough, old age cough, dyspnea, hemoptysis. So lung cancer is the final answer. Great. If I add an option, mesothelioma. Which one is still you would like to pick up? If I put an option, mesothelioma. Mesothelioma also has hemoptysis, dyspnea, cough, and all this thing. Okay, so still I'd go for a lung cancer. If I say asbestos exposure, he's a painter. He paint walls in different home and he's exposed to asbestos. Now, which one is the answer? Okay, now many of you put your feet into my trap and receive a bamboo just now. I mentioned last day, asbestos exposure is more common with lung cancer or more common with mesothelioma. Please try to remember, <laughs> right? Last day we mentioned that one. Yes, it's more common with a lung cancer than mesothelioma. So this is a trap. They will set trap like this. As I mentioned, we'll make the mistake here and will not mis make the mistake in the main exam. Okay, this is how they play with the question, which I'm just trying to play here for your betterment. They'll also try to play with the questions. All right. Lung cancer related, we have discussed. We have discussed about the types. We have discussed about the paraneoplastic feature, especially small cell carcinoma, SCTH, AGA is at the paraneoplastic feature. Scomo cell, cell carcinoma in the central, so symptoms present more early. Parathyroid hormone. I think we have gone through the details, right? Lung cancer, I'm not going. If anyone forget that one, please check the theory video again. Hmm. So lung cancer, cigarette smoking is common, genetic is more common. My quick question is prognosis is good. 
lung cancer prognosis what do you think my dear doctors you all are knowledgeable it is not neither the mesothelioma not a good prognosis so dear doctors for lung cancer you know please check out john mozak 395 did you know this gentleman any guesses his name is john baba okay <laughs> sometimes often we call john baba so now if john murtag is called baba just making fun guys don't take it seriously the book like davidson you know even more high tech book what davidson should be called in that case maybe dada okay then what about the um, even bigger book harrison I'm, I'm sure you have seen the size of harrison book then what harrison would be calling you know some say part dada poro dada whatever these things right so many people many name lot of baba lot of dada Okay. All right. So, so last time we discussed these things, guys. Risk factors, types, perineoplastic feature, and asbestos exposure. I hope you remember all of them, guys. I hope you remember all of them, actually. Asbestos exposure, just now asked questions. Some of you made mistake. So it should be lung cancer. Asbestos exposure, more chances to lung cancer. Right. Okay. Let's move to an, another question. Okay, I want a smart answer, guys. 52-year patient who recently diagnosed with lung, um, with a lung cancer, with a weight gain, and uh, who is seeing this, that on examination, he has a moon phase buffalo hypertension. He reveals hypokalemia. What is the likely diagnosis? Okay. So what is maybe relevant to this diagnosis? What is relevant to this diagnosis? So he has a stra dark skin and all these things. This is indicating what? So answer in this case would be ectopic acetate secretion. Whenever you go with Cushing disease, okay. Again, not as easy as it sounds, guys. Cushing disease or Cushing syndrome is the syndrome. It can be many causes. Uh, this particular thing, question has a lung cancer related thing. Plus, so lung cancer, guys, again, please listen carefully, lung carcinoma plus, uh, plus Cushing feature. Cushing feature. You know, these are called the paraneoplastic features. Paraneoplastic features. Here, the diagnosis is small cell cancer probably because of this Cushing feature. Now, from where all this ACTH are coming from, and that is eventually causing the Cushing. Is it is it the Cushing syndrome or is it a ectopic secretion? And if it is ectopic secretion, it must be coming from lungs actually. So this ectopic ACTH secretion means enormous amount of ACTH secretion. There must be some external source. And this external source here is a lung actually. This external source here is a Lung usually. So there's a second source. Normally, what is the source for ACTH? Pituitary glands. Normally, it's pituitary gland. But here is an ectopic. Okay, so guys, this correlation type of question comes often in the exam. If you're trying, looking for a pattern, these are the pattern of the questions. Often, easy questions are given too, but this pattern of questions of correlation are also common. So ectopic ACTH secretion. If you answer Cushing syndrome, that's also technically correct, but you have to look into the question. Do you have a better answer here? The better answer is here is a ectopic acetate secretion, actually. Great. So it was a paraneoplastic effect of lung cancer. Is it clear, dear doctors? Is it clear, my dear doctors? So this question was related to this question was related to that paraneoplastic feature. 
So did you understand why I mentioned even last day that paraneoplastic we have to study in really better way because question comes from here. From lung cancer types are important. We just see SCC related one question came up. Correct? Risk factor, you know, like a smoking and any other chemical exposure, exposures, asbestos exposure can lead to lung cancer as well. And asbestos exposure, we also learn asbestos is more related to lung cancer, less related to mesothelioma. Okay. Why theory is important? Uh, because to solve recall. Okay. And whenever I teach something on the Sunday, try to read it before the Thursday. So this is the only, only rule here. I mean, I know many of you want to do a lot of advanced studying, but let the technique on me, like, you know, for MC. So for the Sunday class, when you read the theory being told, okay, first absorb that theory. If you are weak, then check the recording again. It's not always necessary to see the recording again and again. Those of you who are good, manage to take notes and this, that. You don't really need to see the recording and waste it. In the beginning, it is recommended to see a few recording, but eventually I know the good doctors, they manage this in three hours, everything. Then next day, they'd rather start discussing. So, and some doctor waste time again seeing the recording later because they don't like to focus in the first class, actually. So this is a tip. Uh, between a great student and a good student. Good student will come to class. They will be regular. The great students will take all notes. Uh, remember, try to remember that one. And next day, immediately, things are in mind. They will try to discuss with their friend. Okay, they know Dr. Sherry has still this, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they mark their John Murtak and make it complete in the next day. If you delay the dates by, for example, Sunday class theory, you read on the Wednesday, you will start forgetting things what I mentioned in the class, okay? Then, you know, you need the recording again, this, that. So, you know, it's all about technique, actually. Some other day we'll talk about the forum discussion, but, you know, it is too early uh, to discuss about that one. I don't recommend now to go for forum discussion immediately. There's a forum, share your CMC guideline. You can also post question to discuss and gather with them, you know, a big source of doctors, like this, like a 20, I think 8,000 doctors there actually. And they also take part, some as exam, this, that. So you can also post some question. You can also find more questions there actually. That part, I'm not recommending in first week. First week, whatever I'm telling, just try to absorb it, get into the system. We'll talk about more about the forum in coming days. We'll talk more about the question bank also in coming days actually, okay? So don't worry. Trust me, you just have to be what I said and just follow this one. Don't be panic. Very, very important is that not getting panic. Okay. 50 year man old, like he was having renal transplant. Let's see, suddenly wind of change. You know, a question turned out to be renal transplant. Now, neck rigidity, meningitis three days ago, nothing mentioned about respiratory symptom, no fever. On chest x is a well defined round shape opacity. So we have a x ray probably. And next is showing some round shape opacity in the middle right of the lobe. What is the cause? Now, that's an interesting question. So this is going towards a transplant patient, means an immunocompromised patient who has happened to have some lung-related problem. Transplant patient happened to have some lung-related problem. Okay, so suspected maybe one of these conditions. So you have to know exactly this transplant patient's can develop what? Transplant patient can develop what? Now, here we go. In this case, here we go. In this case, we picked up here aspergillosis actually. Now, how it is coming, let's come into that one. In transplant patient, it is a possibility in immunocompressed patient, it can, it can be a possibility. Now, here is a thing. Here is a thing. Renal transplant means immunocompromised. Agreed, guys. Renal transplant means immunocompromised. Now, you have known HIV-related things, which is also immunocompromised. So in, in immunocompromised, so many microorganisms overtaken, aspergillosis, PCP, TB, nocardia, these are the things. So X-ray finding exclude the tuberculosis. Did you think, mm, yeah, I think they will give you also X-ray similar like that. So similar like that, you will get an X-ray. Does this X-ray looks like 
tuberculosis, guys. Any of these x-ray, does it look like tuberculosis? So you will have an x-ray definitely in front of you. From the x-ray, will decide that, okay, it's not a tuberculosis. So some round shape opacity. So this round shape opacity goes more with a aspergillosis. Now, why not nocardia? That can be a smart question. If anyone asks this question, this is a smart one, actually. Doctor, why not nocardia? Nocardia also may have a bit similar features like this. Answer, yes, it is also common in um, immunocompromise and similar thing can happen, but nocardia will have focal lesion rather than aspergillosis has a round shape opacity. This is a bit advanced level question, guys. Don't be sad for that. You know, so these are the things. So the aspergillosis is immunocompromised condition. This can happen when someone is immunocompromised. Aspergillus, aspergillosis, then PCP, then TB, then nocardia. These are common. Clear, guys? So round shape and the focal. Round shape and the focal. Yeah. This is advanced learning, guys. This is a little advanced learning. I mean, these are the things beneficial when you join the course. Okay, you get to know from me when there is a topic that comes like that. This is a, definitely an advanced topic. Uh, but now you know. That's a better thing. Here is a little chart about the occupational lung disease. Uh, perhaps you can take a picture. Maybe that's fine. Totally. Yeah. So, but mainly I think last day we also, this thing came. Asbestosis, then silicosis. These two are more important. And pneumoconiosis. So these three conditions is recommended to learn more from the occupational lung disease. I'm holding here for a few more seconds. If you want to read, if you want to take picture, that's fine for this one. See, this line is given clearly. Can you see this? Yes and affects of in the lower lobe. So try also remember that, guys. Uh, asbestosis targeting lower lobe, berylliosis, upper lobe, upper lobe, upper lobe. Right? So these are the things. Uh, pneumoconiosis, like, you know, lower, upper, both can be affected. Okay, moving forward. Great. Aboriginal lady has a mitral stenosis and dyspnea on examination, bilateral basal grip. I think you already get it. No fever and sputum, chest showing, hyaluroposity, asking diagnosis. I think I want a quick answer. Left-sided heart situation and leading to left-sided this heart situation and leading to what? Heading to, yes, well done. Pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension. Left-sided heart disease. I'm, I'm trying to draw again. I mean, maybe some of them didn't get it. This is the heart. This is the left side. This is the left atrium. Then here is the lungs. Lung has vasculature. So when this part is narrow, pressure is here. Then pressure goes in the lung. Develops pulmonary hypertension. Clear, everyone? Yes. Here's a little bit thing about the pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary arterial hypertension eventually related to left-sided heart disease. Please mark this one. Please write it down. That left-sided heart disease. Eventually, they might have some lung diseases like a possibility of having COPD. Yeah. So these are some of the additional points you can remember. If pulmonary hypertension, they can have difficulty in breathing and they feel fatigue. So dizziness, chest pain, palpitation, ankle swelling. So these are some of the features of pulmonary hypertension. I think it's a similar type of question. Let's not go further. I mean, it has similarity. So answer again, pulmonary hypertension. One more thing, please remember, when we see the word aborigine, Aborigine uh, means less care, actually. I mean, they don't have much health care, right, Aborigine. So there's more chances they can develop rheumatic fever and develop mitral stenosis and all these things are common. 
in Aboriginal community. Anyways, the answer is pulmonary hypertension, a similar kind of question. Next question again is a Aboriginal but a woman, mitral stenosis located this time. And your answer is a pulmonary hypertension. Okay, similar sort of question actually. This is a pulmonary hypertension, radiograph bit looks like. Pulmonary hypertension, radiograph bit looks like. Now what is evident in this X-ray? Let me try to use magnifier, yes. What is evident in this X-ray? What do you think, guys? This area is. So what we can see as a finding, chest radiograph in the patient with a secondary hypertension reveals enlarged pulmonary arteries. So pulmonary vasculature, pulmonary prominent vasculature. Yes, someone said is exact right word. There is a prominent this vasculature. About radiology, we'll give you more guidance in future. So don't worry. Those of you, I know what's going on in your mind. Um, okay, we want it to be much better with radiology. We'll guide you on radiology in future. So don't worry. Great. Six-year child coming with a cough with intercostal recession. Can you guess from here? Four-year boy. Can it be bronchiolitis? Quick question. Can it be? Bronchial fever is quite high. It is a no. Okay. So one probably. Okay. On examination, chest is clear, treated with fluid and oxygen, which microorganism is responsible. So what do you think? The diagnosis. So cough with intercostal recession. Intercostal recession means respiratory distress. So in this case, oh, sorry. Anyone can tell the diagnosis, but what do you think about the diagnosis? Okay, many are going with a pneumonia. All right. Hmm. Okay, in order to prove this is pneumonia, what symptom do you think should be present as well? Please check in the clinical features. Fever is there, but cough, fever, cough. Okay, more lung finding expected, maybe. Rust is put on, more lung finding. Particular few of these things can be presented. Yeah, sorry. Hmm. Now, guys, one thing, if you think in that way, can it be by any chance croup? If I propose this one, can it be croup? Can you, can you try to uh, correlate here? Is that possibility? It can be a croup. A croup age group is six months to six years. Six months to six years. This is the age group for croup. Bronchiolitis age group is less which is respiratory sensitial virus. So that one may be out of the option. Now, two things is confusion. One, streptopneumonia, your diagnosis is pneumonia. And this para-influenza virus, it is for the group. Okay, so either it's the B or another one. So which one do you think it is going more with actually? Okay, carry on. Well done, good discussion. Yeah, good point. Group will also have um, expected stridor. But you know, also we have a Accessory muscles are affected while breathing. This is also quite common in case of croup. You know, this intercostal recession and in drawing, accessory muscle, you know, is very commonly affected. Yes. Um, see, always they will not give you barking cough. I never have seen giving barking cough in any exam. They said cough, most cases in croup. 
some cases they say abnormal sound as well abnormal sound which i was expecting in this question which i was expecting in this question okay so this is a difficult one i guess this is a you know very interesting and difficult one actually yeah so i think you know i just one step more towards the group um probably actually one step probably just more towards the group yeah that's just a possibility but, but this kind of question uh, we'd highly recommend you to discuss in the guideline group actually so someone please copy this question take a screenshot and post in guideline group and have more discussions things like that okay we can reveal that answer a little later but i want you to initiate the process of discussion actually okay so this is how people discuss anything complex came up you post in guideline group then have discussion in between so this is how things to be done actually all right okay i'm not revealing the main answer probably you know maybe with a but we'll reveal it later actually okay i want you guys to discuss on that one okay next question coming is a 55 years male known to have a copd patient came with a shortness of breath oxygen given by venturi mask so some lab findings are given like saturation this that ph high what is the management so asking for management i think it's a straightforward most cases so it's a cpap because it's below 85 situation is quite grave not good so it's a d a little bit more information about the copd you can see the radiology clearly very clear radiology blackening more of these parts increased bronco vascular markings as you can see and also the bit barrel shaped chest at the same time more commonly they are they will be smoker actually so uh, in john mutar uh, someone asked when is intubation i think already this part is discussed in the theory uh, when cpap and intubation is given then cpap is better if cpap is not given in then intubation actually basically the word is invasive ventilation actually that is the term in between a lot of options that comes actually okay john murtak 881 page john murtak please check about the copd actually chronic obstructive pulmonary disease often there is smoker over 45 treatment is same as asthma but anticholinergic drugs are better responder barrel shaped shape and clinical symptoms you can check it already we discussed last day all the features of obstructive lung disease would be there all right a uh, similar bit question this one is a cpap because exactly 85 given then so previous one is a cpap has given 85 um yeah skipping because it's a similar sort of question uh this can be interesting x ray showing hyalur shadow hyalur shadow bilaterally with a scenario of a child with abdominal pain cough and fever what is your diagnosis now this is an interesting question bilateral hyalur shadow actually so if bilateral hyalur shadow i think most of you if i'm not mistaken you will be like to answer this one as a e sarcoidosis it is bilateral hyalur shadow so very obvious this is sarcoidosis yes so john murtak 463 page also you can check our sarcoidosis note i think it is a multi system disease which affects eye lungs even liver even even the skin and skin has a erythema nodosum this finding of erythema nodosum is very important for exam and of course the most unique feature is a bilateral hyalur lymph node very very unique feature so it's no doubt it is sarcoidosis this is taken from our note um, as you can see like type of lesion um, skin lesion erythema nodosum investigation x ray we do initially confirmed by x ray later and uh, this finding is important all right moving forward to next one this is another finding related to sarcoidosis another finding sarcoidosis bilateral hyalur lymph adenopathy all right i'm holding here again one more time all good guys please comment in the comment section understandable how the question those we taught in the theory 
Now it's coming to the recall actually relevant, right? You can see a lot of relevancy, even though some are bamboo question, but that's okay. That's how we learn. Next question, old domain, 75 years. I think it's a similar bit question. I think we saw this is a repeat one actually, M5. A complication of pneumonia, similar question. Sorry about the repetition. Okay, this is two year kid with a fever, abdominal pain, vomiting, extra showing consolidation. So it's a pneumonia. So what's next? So a kid with a pneumonia treatment, a kid with a pneumonia treatment. So what do you think? Which one you like to go with? So in this case, idea would be to go with, let's see the final answer. Last day we were talking, I give you a little hint, like scenario of a moderate to severe pneumonia. So what do you think? Oral amoxicillin. Now, some of you will be thinking flucloxacillin, but is it severe condition? Like a grunting is present, vital is deteriorating. No, right? So it, those things are not really here. So it's more like a like mild to moderate. So I think oral amoxicillin would be fine, actually. IV is not necessary. Fever, pain, extra strain consolidation. Given oral antibiotic would be fine. So answer is a penicillin. Okay, coming to this part, let, let's clarify guys. Like let's clarify, you don't have to worry. I know what's going on in your mind. Let's see what we have picked up. Amoxicillin, amoxicillin. So did you pick up this taken from eighth edition? Did you pick up the correct? So it's a mild one. See so child fever like this, that showing consolidation. No significant anything vital, no intercostal recession. Now, when we say moderate, quick question, when we say moderate, there has to be some intercostal recession and accessory muscle and all this thing certainly has to be present. So since those are not there, you know, we don't really think so. Okay. So that's the thing. So moderate to severe pneumonia. See, age over 85 is a one of those points about moderate pneumonia. So those are thinking benzyl penicillin has to be moderate first actually to go for moderate treatment. So moderate release pneumonia is more common in over 65 people. Over 65 people. Here we picked up the innocent one, the simple one, the amoxicillin oral. Okay, so it depends on your severity, mild, moderate, severe, then that's the thing. Great. All right. Uh, possible, actually. That's a possible actually. Yes, actually, how many episodes of vomiting that's also matters is recall often not clear actually. So if that's a one episode of vomiting, it doesn't really matter if we'd like to. But if vomiting turn into the main complaint here, vomiting in the, is the main complaint for that person. Uh, vomiting is common because one episode of vomiting can happen in a kid is very, very common. All right, so that's the thing. All right. Anyways, good discussion, guys. Keep going with that one. Letty has been traveling to the aeroplane. Things are getting complicated, right? Things are getting two days ago, United Kingdom presence on dyspnea, temperature, this, that. Guys, uh, because at the end, um, we also get tired. It's very common. So I'd like to go a little bit faster now. Okay. I'm not following the uh, Zoom chat box for a while and just giving the final answers, actually. Okay, coughing and inspiration on auscultation found crackle. What is the possible diagnosis? Okay, try an answer. Let me go for an answer. So in this current, because there is a travel history and after two days of United Kingdom, so from UK to Australia, from UK to Australia, that's really far and in a long travel history. So there's a very high chance of pulmonary embolism. Very, very high chance. This is and also chest pain and breathlessness present and long travel history present. This is pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism CT have findings like this. Okay, so some cases they might give you also CT scan finding. 
some cases they might give you radiology finding radiology finding x-ray will have some weight shape opacity weight shape opacity for pulmonary embolism keep that one in mind okay yeah this time it came a bit um <laughs> incomplete question though uh, like something related to uh, giant stroke breathing, a very, very recent and fresh question actually of this particular year, like very recent month, uh, this has been coming. So we collect it in this way, this particular question. So we have been thinking this is has a giant stroke actually. So it related looked like, you know, hypoventilated question even also came up like that actually. So they might give you pictures like that, and that can be turned out to be a giant stroke breathing related question. Okay, so this is something a little advanced. So I give you a task. Uh, maybe in future we'll update that one is because it's very newly came up actually. So um, we'd like to update that one in our note in future in coming days about like giant stroke actually. So this is I think in 2022 you know, December month, you know, these MC examiners are drinking a lot. And after drinking and partying, you know, a lot of hookworm infestation has happened. And in the beginning of <laughs> 2023, they came up with this kind of questions actually, you know. So anyways, that's the thing. So we'll update you on that one actually, you know, so far what we have collected is just a bit incomplete. Um, we just put our finger on in a giant stroke, but we're still not sure about the full question yet, actually. But it's my job to update you that, you know, a question has came on probably on giant stroke. That's one of the things, actually. So that you might get some future updates on this one. Okay. Oh, sorry, guys. So excuse us for this question because it's too new. So the normal chronograph, this is how it looks like normal chronograph. Okay, it's extremely new. I haven't done research on that one yet. It's it's very new, I think, you know, it's like, you know, I think not common for any doctors, I think. Great. Uh, some of you I have seen using mobile devices. Please make sure you don't come with the mobile devices. Accidentally, you press many time and turn your video on. Uh, this should not happen from the next class, actually. Okay, please make sure you come with a laptop device, sit in a proper place. I also have the option to turn on class videos. Please make sure that you know you are in a proper position, sitting, taking notes, and all this thing. As a teacher, you can expect that one. If it would have been in classroom, definitely you'd have um, do that right without moving. Actually, so phase one, phase two, phase three, we'll update you more on that one. Yeah, so you'll, you'll find a chronology related video probably. Uh, this one I, I will try to drop here. Let me see. As I mentioned, it's a very new topic. Yeah, so click this video or for now you can save it or someone please share this one in guideline group by copying class monitors are requested. You guys can find it and later I'll upload this one, no worries. Right. As I mentioned, I also need to do research on that one because it's new for me as well. Like this, this thing who has studied. Yeah. Next is asbestos men came for a device during work. Workers do not use masks. They are exposed to asbestos during renovation. So it is common like an old house. If you're trying to renovate, it is common actually. So exposed to asbestos during renovation, worried about asbestos related cancer. What is your advice? So advice type of question will be also there. Refer to respiratory specialist, repeat chest x-ray for next five, inform the government to take action. Inform the asbestos has low risk to cause cancer. Best would be repeat a x-ray in five years. The person is exposed to asbestos. So it's better do something for them. Uh, repeat an x-ray in next five years would be a better answer. So x -ray may be uh, used periodically. This is a line. Um, yeah. 
So asbestos safety dot government dot AU a reference website. So asbestos extra periodically or five yearly. So please take a note on that one asbestos extra periodically or five yearly. Clear guys? Asbestos extra periodically or five yearly. Well done. So this one we are sure. I mean we done some research. Now we are sure about that one. People are answering different things. Asbestos related, already this slide has been shown previously, right? Where we also mentioned lung cancer over the mesothelioma. Important. Yeah, we already mentioned this thing, lung cancer exposure. Uh, about this thing, lung cancer, higher chance than this mesothelioma, yes. All right. Next question. 65-year-old man presents with a symptom sign and extra you No, know, you have extra feature of suggestive lung cancer. Often there can be coin shapulation and round shapulation. What is the next investigation? So suspected, what? Lung cancer. X-ray, done. What's next? The basic, the basic, I think I told many times this thing. Initially for any lung related issues, X-ray, then CT scan, then CT scan, then the biopsy or bronchoscopy. Depends, biopsy if in the, Cancer in the peripheral side, bronchoscopy, if cancer is in the central, in the bronchus. So here, like, you know, what we like to do is a definitely, definitely CT scan. We're looking for next, so CT scan. So X-ray, then CT, then confirm with the biopsy. Well done. Some question can be given where lung cancer, inoperable. One thing, like vulnerable, vulnerable, extreme age, extreme age, right? Health situation is important. Is it important? Health fitness for the surgery. You, are, you want to take someone for lung cancer removal, you'll put hands in the lung. Do you think this um, so respiratory status or health status has to be perfect? Yes, definitely that is a yes. Okay, then also the stage, stage 3B, 4A, 4B, we can't operate. We can't operate. Then also SCC, we cannot operate. You see, um, small cell carcinoma of the lung, too aggressive actually, you know. So you have to let the people go in that case. So SCC, you know, can't really operate. Also location. Some are so near to the nerves and many sensitive structure that you can't operate. So you can be given a question in that way, which of the following is true? I mean, in lung cancer, in which cases is it operable? In which cases it is not operable? This is how a question can come. Next question, young boy after episode of severe bout of cough develops chest pain. Uh, then after 12 hours went to ED, reveals 15% of the pneumothorax actually. Uh, dear doctors, if you have any further question, there is the inquiry zone. Feel free to ask there actually, you know, write your questions down and later ask in the inquiry zone. I might miss few things because so many messages. Okay. When you give him morphine uh, after anesthesia, initial management, what you will do? Bout of gov and 15% of the pneumothorax. 15% of the pneumothorax. So my dear, in this question, you know, what we like to go is an assurance. Why aspirate? Fifteen percent. Who wants to aspirate? Any dyspnea feature? Not really. So I think full answer is A. With only cough, we can't call it symptomatic. Clear now? With only cough, we can't call it symptomatic. Symptom we call it when breathlessness present. Clear now? Yes. Well done. And from here, we have taken this line. From here, we have taken this line. So less than 25%, no symptom, observation. A similar sort of question is also present in handbook 2.028. 2.028 has a similar sort of question, guys. Please check it today again. But in the handbook, they're telling 15% may be a cutoff value, which is a wrong, okay? According to latest John Mukhtar picture, you can see we the cutoff value is 25. I hope this will clear the confusion about the pneumothorax 15% and 25%. So we'll follow which one? We'll follow the latest one, the handbook one. 
um, hand, sorry, the John Murtag one. Handbook has an old version, so some few things are not acceptable there. We're almost about the end, last two or three questions, last two questions now. 25 year old presents with a cough, cough for 21 days. Okay, someone has a cough for 21 days. Can we suspect for tuberculosis? Okay, and Montox is positive. Cough for 21 days, can you call it symptomatic? Guys, this is the main part of this question. 21 days cough, how it was advertised, I think if you remember, if you have cough for more than two weeks, you come to the hospital. So technically, it is a symptomatic, correct? Now, coming to this one, he has no history of previous immunization. What to do next? Or order sputum, uh, repeat extent, tubercular isoniazide therapy to start. Now, which one is a better answer here, actually? Because this is high likely a, looks like possibility of latent TB or maybe a regular TB. So what do you think? So many are up to, like, say, anti-tubercular, you can give if you think it's a regular TB. Isoniazide only you can give if you think it's a latent TB. Okay. Now, are this the best thing? Or you order a sputum for acid first bacilli? Answer, order a sputum for acid fight bacilli. Now, how many of you just now received a nice bamboo? I'm coming to the explanation, but <laughs> some of you just now received, I think. Okay. One in the beginning, one in the end. Okay. Fantastic day. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, if you remember this one, you know, why I say it? Follow my class, follow my class, follow what I said. Consider tuberculosis. Even this part I said, actually, oh, I think it was last, actually. I was also dizzy last day. But I, I think I mentioned that, you know, only thing to be considered if you take it as a, only thing to be considered if it's a symptomatic. Now, is it our case symptomatic? First, think about that. Let me show you that question again. Do you think our case is a symptomatic case. And I think we would be agreed it is symptomatic. Symptomatic case. Latent TBs are normally asymptomatic. They also don't have the cough related features in that way. So if it is a 21 days cough, definitely, definitely it's a symptomatic. Now, X-ray, which has been done, which is inconclusive. And now, sputum for AFB. Isn't it one of the main tests for us? A for a symptomatic TB. I would confirm with a sputum for AFB, isn't it? Then comes the drug thing. So those of you jumped into the drug, I think, do you think, do you realize it's a wrong answer here? I mean, without sputum for AFB, you can't go there. Correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. So this is the thing, guys. Whenever you see the... Latent TB question, latent TB question, please first your job to check is it a symptomatic or not. How we understand symptomatic, cough more than two weeks given or not. Montux is a non-specific test, my dear. Montux is a non-specific test, but it's still it counts technically. Okay, you will still in AFB. Do we give uh, TB treatment on the basis of Montux test? A quick question to all of you because a different country guideline can be different. Just on the basis of Montux test or tuberculin test, do we give anti tubercular drug? No, I think we still do sputum for AFP. I think so. It is a justifiable answer. Same question, guys. I'm just trying to make more twist now. Actually, I have suddenly become the avatar of MC examiner. Probably I'm also having a lot of hukum investigations right now. Anyways, fun apart. 25 year male presence with cough for 21 days. An X-ray as a reported, same question. Same question, so same answer. A new thing popped up, isolation. Now, you want to go with isolation or you want to stick to, you know, sputum for AFP? The answer is here. In, in Australia, is tuberculosis is common. Those of you been to Australia already, what is the one test you did? you know, before going to Australia. If you remember, the only one test it is done is a tuberculosis test, X-ray. Some some cases, uh, urine test is also required, but X-ray invariably. If you're young, only X-ray. So Australia does not have tuberculosis. So this is TB clean. So 
if there is a if there is a tuberculosis, this is a notifiable disease. They call it what? Notifiable disease. You need to notify this to you know to um, health service. DHS, they call it DHS, Department of the Health Service to notify about this. And in the meanwhile, isolate first. So before starting any further treatment and this, that you, my dear, will try to isolate first. They isolate first. Yes, well done, doctors. Clear, guys, this one? Yeah, so the same thing. Similar type of question, just a few things has been changed actually. To this last question, 55 year male patient comes with a history of weight loss, sad, with a facial congestion and prominent neck pain. On examination, no breath in the upper lobe. What is the cause of the symptom? Keep going. Okay, guys, keep going. Just give me one second. Just give me a second, guys. Great, guys. So what is the cause of the symptom of this one? Like weight loss, social condition? I think it's a like not a difficult question. No, everything's sound in the leaf. So, I mean, um, two things. Like, you know, it's more common with patient comes with loss of history, facial congestion, and this, that. So I want to go for one, like, you know, uh, more specific. What What is cause of that symptom? Actually, um, first, I think it's more prominent with a superior vena cava obstruction. Second, of course, it's because of a pancos tumor. Pancos tumor, actually. You know, sometimes, you know, weird thing is there. Weird thing is there, actually. So, superior vena cava obstruction due to pancos tumor, actually. Associated with sometimes, you know, the Horner syndrome and all these things. So sometimes, silly questions we found like this. Um, example, there's another question related to frial chest, I remember. You know, they'll give you a scenario of a frail chest. I know what, do you know what is frail chest is, guys? Like when your ribs are broken into two pieces because of an accident, very painful situation, and they can't breathe properly. Okay, so uh, unequal breathing happening, all this thing. 
Now, what is the cause of the pain? <laughs> Very interesting. Is it because of the fracture rib? Or is it is it because of they can't breathe? <laughs> you know, so this sort of um, weird question came up actually. So uh, obvious actually that it's because of the fracture rib actually, you know, because of the fracture rib, um, they can't really breathe actually. Yeah, so that's the thing. Fracture of the rib causing this pain actually. All right. This one is also silly. And even if you pick up lung cancer is also, but I think pancos tumor, if it is mentioned, is better to pick up otherwise actually. Otherwise, I think go more specific, maybe superior venacabal obstruction is okay. Okay, so I think it's ideal is a pancos tumor. I mean, no, I mean, don't take in that way. I think this one is a silly question, you know, sometimes. I mean, even if lung cancer is fine, pancos is also under lung cancer. Don't really find, yes. So superior vena cabal, because of pancos tumor, has all these features. What is the main cause of superior vena cabal syndrome is mostly pancos tumor. So that fits into everything, actually. Yes, overthink. Don't overthink. You will all pass the MC sooner or later. So stay with us. That's the thing. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today and uh, hope most of you have joined because we're going to close the admission, I think, by next um, next week, uh, next one week, actually. Okay. So if anyone is still left over, um, that is the thing. So that was the class for today. Oh, yeah, we have come across long actually today. Looks like well done, guys. Good job. Less mistakes, I noticed. Good batch overall. So thank you so much for attending the session. Now, yes. So this is the end of respiratory system. So thank you so much, guys. Mr. Blessed. Uh, next Sunday, we'll start the GIT. And uh, that's all for today. Like, you know, keep studying. Uh, time to time, I'll tell you more. If you have inquiries, you know, ask in the inquiry zone. Those of you not received notes, you can inbox me. I mean, if you have finished admission, I will probably send you now, actually, you know, or by end of night. So those of you not received the notes yet and finished admission already, please leave me a Gmail or Gmail. We will definitely do that one. Okay. So our next class is on Sunday. I repeat, our next class is on Sunday. Thank you so much, guys. Have a lovely day. Good night.